Is this where I see producers down there? There's Victoria, there's Jen. There goes Jen. Polar Jack is the hecklefish. The hecklefish fish plush is coming. It is. I don't know if you guys saw the community tab, but uh, so we're going to put 10 catchphrases into the plush. So jump on the community tab and, and vote for your favorite. Or if, if no one's recommended your favorite, put it in there. I know now people want him to say uh, it's seasoned with evil. A pretty good turnout for um, for the story tonight. Uh, hi, Noah. Noah's here. It's TS Jedi. Good to see you. Pretty good turnout for the story. Better than I expected. You know, I, religious stuff. It's always uh, it's always risky, but I like religious stories. Elise is going to buy the plushie. Cool. Heckle Flush says Earth Cat. Chris Music Night Court, LOL. Yeah, that's, you, you got a good eye. Arkeesian Tony Stark, is that you? No, it's not Robert Downey Jr. I'm at least two inches taller than he is. Uh, Craig's still monetized, hopefully. Hopefully. I'm surprised we got this far. Ray Lewis uh, loves the show. Thanks so much. Hey, Robert Lee, what's up? I'm surprised we got this far with this video. There's a lot of stuff in there that uh, I thought would be. I mean, I think this video is more graphic than the Denver airport one, right? But that one demonetized for uh, hateful content or whatever. But what did you guys think of the episode? I tried to be as balanced as I could. Clearly, I'm not a believer in, it, believer in exorcism or demons, but a lot of the the exorcists like the the real ones they don't strike me as liars so i don't it's it's very confusing and father mort said he witnessed uh, he witnessed a bunch of supernatural things but we don't have those on camera clearly um but he also said he never saw anyone levitating he never saw anything like that sadly uh everyone is offended by everything these days that's that's true R. Rogers, healthy skepticism. Yeah, I think I think that's a good approach. Because I like the stories. Exorcism is a cool concept. People being possessed by demons is that's interesting to me. You know, where it gets um where it gets a little iffy for me is most of those people are mentally ill. They're sick. And um and Many times exorcisms don't work. I, I mean, there's a website, um, and I can't remember the name of it, but I referred to it for this episode. It'll it'll come to me at some point. It documents how many people die from exorcisms, like every year, and it and how many people die from them. How many people, you know, go to jail because they thought their eight year old daughter was possessed, so they did all kinds of stuff to her, and the you know go to prison. It happens all the time. Sugar wire would like a hecklefish plushie. It's 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 the ball's moving down the field. It's gonna take a minute. 
to get them to you, but the ball is moving down the field. The Demons deserve a more balanced, more fair representation. They were shortchanged, says Jake Best. Jake Best, he's all about inclusivity. And uh, Jake Best I, identifies as a demon, so we need to make sure he has representation. Shane Buckle says, I'm playing with fire. You don't want to know, please. Maybe. I mean, maybe by doing the episode and being skeptical of it, I, maybe I'm inviting inviting the demons in. You know, I, I don't know. I don't feel the demons. A little bit of indigestion, but I don't think that's the same thing. Those demons make you fart. Um, please tell us about those glasses real quick so I can sleep easy. All tree X. Um, the glasses, they're... I have bright lights on my face here and I'm in a dark room. So this is painful to, to do. It's hard to do. And at the distance where the screen is, I, it's hard to read because I'm old and I can't read it. So these have a little bit of a prescription, a little bit of magnification so I can read. And then the amber is so the lights don't destroy my, my peepers. I wish they weren't so dark. It looks weird to me, but it's they're comfortable to wear. The power of AJ and Hecklefish compel us, says Wilson. Did you stick around to the end to hear him screaming that? I don't know how many people stick around for, for that. I always put jokes in there to, to reward someone for sticking around through like all the plugs at the end. So I try to always do a Hecklefish joke or, or something just to make it worth it. And I try to go fast, as fast as I can. It's, you know, maybe 15 seconds to plug, to like, subscribe, do the thing, join this, buy this. And then the rest of the outro is just all the Patreons and, and all the people sending in pictures. Mac, what do you think of Possessed Dolls, says Mac. I think they're great stories, Mac, but I, I, I don't think there's any such thing as a Possessed Doll. Although that idol that the Bradys found on the island when they went to Hawaii, that caused all kinds of problems for the Bradys. You guys remember that, right? The taboo. All kinds of problems for the Brady's. Misty Hill, holy vodka. That's that's right. That's what he said. It's just, you know, it's... The Rune Lady, she's like the toilet paper on my shoe. You know, meaning she's necessary. She's helpful like toilet paper is. But um, but once she gets get on there, you can't... You can't quite get her off. She's just always around with the with the with with the, the avatar. Wake up! Still, only people that get possessed are religious. That's not entirely true, but it is mostly true. That is mostly true. Um, but you know, if you have the mental disorder, if you have schizophrenia and some of the disorders that that are typically associated with possession, then you're going to go on whatever your belief system is. So if you're extremely religious, then that's how it's going to manifest, manifest itself. But there, there, I mean, if you live in a city, you could walk around and see people that act possessed right, right now. I mean, they, they're right now, they're right down there right now, but they're, they're just, you know, they're, they're just ill. Wolfkinder three, Wolfkinder three. Uh, YouTube pushes me out before the video ends. I don't, I don't know why that would be. When the video ends, you're supposed to get redirected here. But I don't know if that works. At the while the credits are rolling, I run over in here and uh, and get this thing fired up. Okay, we got some prayers in the chat. Uh, most people believing in demons, ghost spirits, all believe in some sort of religion or new age. That's kind of, kind of, kind of, I kind of agree, Leah. I mean, people who believe in paranormal stuff will believe in paranormal stuff. And religion is, religion is supernatural. That's not, that's not an insult to religion. It's supernatural. Your priest would call it supernatural. But he would also say it's real. And look, I'm not religious, and you you guys know that I'm not very religious, but I have a lot of respect for religion, and I enjoy the stories that come from religion, and I like the morality that comes from religion, the guidance, the structure. 
you know, kids these days, kids these days don't have that. Siraj, Siraj says, where is Hecklefish? Get him on live. Now this is an idea I can get behind. Which, who, who, who set up Gino's room? The, the, the set designer for Joe Biden speeches? Look at that. <laughs> That's intense. Undisclosed bunker. Is that an undisclosed bunker with Venetian blinds? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You gotta be able to peek through a little bit. <laughs> you never know <laughs> who's watching. Wait, which exactly? Are you in my bunker? No, no, I'm um different undisclosed bunker. Undis undisclosed location. Yeah. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Uh, um, Liebe Macher, sixty six L M L M A O Brady Bunch. Gina, you remember that Brady Bunch episode, right? Of course, the Tiki Doll. Yeah, <laughs> the Tiki Doll. Yeah. All right, there he goes. There he goes. Corey Jaron. Jaron. I don't know, Corey, I don't know if you're asking me if I believe in ghosts or you're asking someone in the chat. But if you're asking me, then I don't believe in ghosts, but there's a part of me that kind of does. Like, I don't believe in them. But if suddenly science said ghosts exist and here's the reasons why electromagnetism or whatever, I'd go, oh, okay, that, that's what people saw. That makes sense. But my my disbelief is fairly new. I believed in ghosts a long time. Jay McIntyre thinks I look like Cyclops from the X Men. I don't know. I don't remember the, who, who who played that in the movie, but I'm I'm much more handsome than he is. That's that's clear. Paul Wright, Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Of course. What is going on in the chat? Uh, everyone is evil by choice and naughty by nature. Well done. Don says ghosts are glitches in the simulation. That's an interesting approach. You, you know, I lean toward the simulation theory, and it's an interesting approach uh, to think about ghosts as, you know, maybe bugs in the program or some, something that went awry. You know, when our program ends, Whatever's supposed to happen to our program as an individual, but maybe, maybe the code gets loose and it's just rolling around, just loose code, and that's what's making things go bump in the night. Murph, so what is possession in the simulation? It's hard to say, Murph. It really depends on your belief. If it's if it's me, then, you know, someone who's mentally ill in the simulation either has a program that's not working right or dep depending on how philosophical you want to get about the simulation, if you think that 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 the simulation is is inhabited by us, but we are still sentient conscious beings with souls, which I also believe. I just believe our souls are, exist in the simulation. So um, if you believe that we're souls and the reason that we come to earth and come and die and come back or however, whatever you believe, all the, the belief systems that, that, that have that as part of the system, the reincarnation, ha have it. So the reason we're here is to learn things, to experience things, and bring that information back to whatever you want to call that. The, in, the ultimate, the infinite, infinite, some people will call it God, whatever you call it. So then possession, it, if it doesn't exist, if it's just mental illness, then at least what I believe is people who suffer here on earth, who, are, who have a lot, just lives of suffering, like Annalise Michelle, just, just heartbreaking, that before they incarnate here, there's a decision made that, look, you're going to go back, um, but it's going to be a rough time. You know, it's that you are a movie star last time. Now you're going to be possessed and they're going to starve you to death, chained in your bed. Cool. And then you, you do that because that's an, because that, that makes you grow as a soul, as a person. You know, when they talk about someone's an old soul, that's someone who's just seems wise beyond their years and, and for some reason always makes good decisions. 
kind of person that you like to talk to. I'm not an old soul. I'm I'm a, I'm brand new. Andre ninety six. So you you don't believe in God? You know I don't know Andre if you saw the simulation theory episode. The the theme of the entire episode was you've got people who believe in God and people who believe in the simulation, and but the big question is what's the difference? So, I didn't say I don't believe in God. If I if I, and I'm not saying I firmly believe simulation. I'm just saying most of most of what I experience and see around me now that I now that I'm aware of simulation theory points in that direction, and I'm not the only one. But. Whether it could, whatever's happening could be part of the simulation. Sure, it could, could be God's plan, Andre. And, you know, it's the same thing. And I think that's what's cool about simulation theory is that's the challenge. If, um, if you're talking to someone about it is have them prove that it's not a simulation. You know, it, it, it can't be done because everything could be explained by a simulation theory. Jen is agnostic. That's always, it's always smart. Just, just park yourself on the fence and just observe Things happening around. That's always smart. Now, Martin's made it. They're 100% uh, uh, is uh, a god. I respect that. I respect that, Martin's. And you'll never hear me argue against it. You know, you never hear, you'll never hear me make atheist arguments like there, there is no god. You'll never hear me do that because... Um, because if you believe in, in simulation theory or you believe... Then, then you already believe in some type of... Um, intelligence that exists beyond ours some super intelligence even if it's not conscious running our program it's still something made it so why can't why can't that be god it, it can be you know or our simulation is being run by some fat kid with pimples in his basement playing us on you know on xbox it could be and that's god to us you know he's he's a, he's a chubby greasy god so it could be the same God is an astronaut. Uh, same Rando says he is Rando. He is God. Um, I'm certain that he is not a creator, but not all powerful. Yeah, you know that's it. you've got the you've got those people who believe not only that there's a God, but that He controls our every actions and He has a plan for us and everything that happens is a reason. And you know, God never gives you more than you can handle, and all of those things. Cool. I won't argue with that. And then it goes back. You, some people will pull it back. There is a God, but he doesn't not paying that close of attention. He just keeps a general eye on things. He's got a lot on his plate. And then you pull it back a little, and then there are people who believe there's a God, but he doesn't pay attention to us at all. He just made it happen, and he just, it's up to us now. It's all free will. And that's what's cool about it. Just, um... I dig religion. I just, I don't want, I don't want, I don't want beliefs imposed on anyone. That's all. Whether it's religion, whether it's p political, whether it's baseball teams, I don't just have your beliefs and be cool with it. Don't argue with people about theirs because you, no one, you don't know who's right. But James Cruz might be right. Hecklefish is his Lord and Savior. Finally, a human who gets it. Cecil Hamilton, anal ease, another golden hecklefish moment. I, it could be a, a mug, I guess. People were asking for an anal ease mug, but I don't, I don't know. Jen's wagging her finger down me at me down there, but we already have the fisted mug, so there's clearly. I mean, maybe that becomes a whole category on the merch store, right? Is just, is just, it just no. I don't know what you'd call it, butt play. I don't know what you'd call it. Only because. She was a real person that had a horrendous life and died horribly. And well, we I, I don't want to have that her, karma out there. We wouldn't put her, put her picture on it. It doesn't matter. It's still making fun of her name. It's not It'll just good be anal karma. Ease, no. And maybe it's Hecklefish wearing like a, a rubber glove. No. All right. Sorry, Cecil. She says no. Motocross PK, I saw you in the premiere. Thanks for hanging out tonight. What's your insight on out-of-body experiences? Just a couple of weeks ago, I covered the um, the Gateway experience, which if you didn't see that, 
Uh, check that out at some point. That's, um, that describes a technique on how to achieve an out-of-body experience with binaural beats. So I don't know if I can give you insight, but I, I, I kind of believe that they can happen. You know, I wish I can get, I wish I can get it to work. I've, tr I've tried. I've tried since I'm a kid, all the different techniques. Listen to this, smoke that, whatever you do to, to achieve that state. I've tried all those things that I just can't, I can't seem to do it. And I think part of it is personality. You know, I think I'm, I'm too, I'm too wired for, for anxiety, you know, so I can't let it go. Like I can't be hypnotized, not because I'm too cool or I'm too smart. It's because I'm too crazy. You know, I can't relax. I, I can't, you know, I can't relax. Can you confirm? I can confirm. You can confirm? You cannot relax. I cannot. No. All right. She concurs and confirms. Josh Warren, uh, Joshua Warren, lucid dreaming. I want to do an episode on lucid dreaming, but I don't know which approach. Our Roger says, try fasting. I've tried that. Um, lucid dreaming. So Joshua, I, I want to know your, your, what approach you'd like. Do you want me to, exp you want me to talk about what it is, the science of it, uh, the, the mechanisms in the brain that, that do it and maybe talk about the science of dreaming or do you want the video to teach you techniques on how to achieve lucid dreaming? Cause, cause I can do either. I'm interested in both. Um, I haven't played with lucid dreaming in a while. But I went, I go through phases with it. And when I'm focused on it, I can do it pretty regularly, probably 10% of the time, which is pretty high. Um, I ha I struggle staying in. Like I, I, be I become lucid, I'm aware, and I'm like, oh, this is great. And I get it excited again. I, I can't chill. So I, I get so excited that it, that it's working. And then when that happens, you actually lose the lucidity. And only people who've done who've done lucid dreaming will understand what I'm talking about. But you can feel it happening. You can feel the lucidity being pulled away from you, and you can feel yourself being pulled back into the dream. And it happens to me very quickly when I'm out. Now I've tried techniques to stay lucid. You know, there are things that you do. You can spin around. Um, there are techniques where throughout the day, when you're in your waking state, you you point out things or you. You count to numbers to remind yourself that you're awake. And then when you're lucid, you look for those keys, those clues, those numbers, and they're not there. And then you can confirm that you're lucid. So that's the problem I have with lucidity. But, but when you get it to work and you can stay in it for a little bit, man, it's a lot of fun. Because anything can happen. And I mean, you, you, you feel like a god in your own mind because it's because it's you, right? And then suddenly like, oh, I want to fly. I want to, you know, create a mountain. I want to do this. I want to, you know, you could, whatever you want. Nicholas Logan, how long have you and Jen been married? Love the band. <laughs> oh, hi, it's just me. Um, we've been married for almost eight years and together for 14. 14? 14. It's a long time. There she goes. I think she was going to say, um, uh, it's a long, long time. Caleb, 1874. Yeah. Wet, lucid dreaming. You, you know, sometimes kids hang out in the live stream. So I didn't want to get too graphic, although we talked about Annalise. So I guess, I, yeah, I guess, I guess the cat's out of the bag. Um, but if that is your, you know, if as a younger man, maybe I would lean more toward the wet, lucid dreaming. But, uh, you know, as an, as an older man, it's, it's not as, not as interesting, but if you're lucid in your dream and that's what you want to play with, oh yeah. Oh yeah. You, you can do that. Kevin says, Jen is uh, lovely. I agree. So Miranda, there she goes. Oh, Grace McAllister. Oh, thanks Grace. I love you too. Oh, that's a great profile picture. I like it. It's a what? Her profile, her what little, her little avatar pic is really good. I can't tell what's going on in her picture. Is that her? Is she that just, her hair, or is she wearing a is a hat? Is that a hat or hair? It's hair, and she's got is cute it? red or pink glasses. 
It's and, not and uh, it's I, not a motocross helmet, slightly askew. No. And I think she's sitting in front of a picture with cows on it. It looks like the cow is bleeding from the center of its head. So maybe no, it's like where I they it's, sla just, it's a slaughterhouse picture. I think it's just the way that it's painted. There's red paint and you are in a mood today, aren't you? Grace McAllister, she's very dark. Everybody knows that. Um, oh, what's I I missed your comment. Oh, there you are. There you are. There's Brian. And there she is. Uh, Brian F, what's the shirt on the wall? Um, so we're working with a new merch vendor for the Hecklefish plushie and for another surprise item that I'm not going to spoil just yet. And they sent us a sample and I had hung it up there to take a picture it. of it. Just, you can spoil it. This is, this is the close, this is the coterie in here. Okay. Well, we're working on Look. a tinfoil hat. A tinfoil hat? A tinfoil hat. Yes. Made of real tinfoil? So, no, not real tinfoil, but it'll look like real tinfoil. But it'll still keep the signals out, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. That's important. It's got to so, look good, but it's got to keep yes. the, the EM, EM out. Right. But anyway, they Hard. sent us, a, they sent us a, a t shirt and I hung it up there to take a picture of it to send to AJ because he was at the studio and not here. And uh, I forgot to take it down. So it's not like. <laughs> You do that it's a lot. Like don't, you start a, don't you start a project and then about halfway you through see? you just bail out and, and then you leave your All toys. <laughs> Did you always leave your toys scattered about? Yes. I did. Sorry. Sorry. Uh the zone of silence in Mexico. I wonder if the I wonder what would happen if you wore the tinfoil hats in there. Uh, I've got a short coming up on on the Zone of Silence in Mexico because I can't couldn't figure out Triple Z eighty nine how to do a full episode on it. But it's but it is interesting. If you don't know, I'm sure that you do. But there is a part, a small area in Mexico where radio signals don't work, phone, cell phones don't work, nothing nothing works in there. And part of the the legend is people will go in there get headaches, they get sick. So it could be a good episode. Pasta Vajul, Baba Bui, 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 Baba Bui. Frazzle Badger loves the show. Thanks, Frazzle. Oh, uh, PSI Energos, it's a hair hat. We we're talking about Grace McAllister. And we were just, we we're just having a bit of fun, PSI. We don't need to, need to be rude. Uh, should we go to some, some, some super chats, some starred? Um, I see that we've got a new tab in here. I'll talk to you guys about this later, but. Well, Look at that. We'll talk about it now. Uh, so we've got a new tab there. I wonder, is this what I requested from them? So super chats are just landing there. That's great. Wow. Um, but I guess we still need the starred. Well, we. We'll talk about this at the post uh, at the post show meeting in about five hours. <laughs> yes. <Great. laughs> All right. So there's Robert Real. Thank you for the support. I always found this subject to be extremely frightening. My grandson Liam loves hecklefish. My granddaughter Yanni became a fan after her teacher told the class about Dorothy Edie, and I showed her your video. That's very cool, Robert. I like the Dorothy Edie video. If you haven't seen it, that's um, Dorothy Edie was. This this is her story, but it's you know it's a pretty good one. Reincarnated, and um, when she was a young girl, started to remember that she um, lived a life in ancient Egypt, and she had an illicit affair with the with the Pharaoh Ramses, and uh, and the th when people are reincarnated, they're always someone famous, right? They're always Joan of Arc or Napoleon or whatever other. Uh, famous French person I can't think of. You're always something famous. No one's like, oh, I'm reincarnated. I used to be a, I used to work in a dry cleaner. You know, I used to, I, I worked in a deli. But Dorothy Edie, she had a, she had a, a, a knowledge like of, she studied hieroglyphics, right? And she studied, um, 
she like interned at the British Muse Museum. And I forget who she worked with, but he was a famous guy. And he said she took to ancient Egypt, the language, um, the the writing faster than any he's faster than anyone he'd ever known. And he said it was uncanny was the word he used. It was unnatural that she was able to do it. And then when she went, finally went to Egypt, she she was able to identify rooms and tombs that were not discovered before. And um, at one point she was challenged by an Egyptologist and taken into a large uh, excavated, it, was, it wasn't a tomb, but it was like an under, like a temple and blindfolded or eyes closed or something like that. And he asked her to take him around and she, she went like through four or five, six rooms and said this, you know, this was the gardens. This is where these people live. This is what happened here. And she was correct about all of it. And she was so good that she worked for like the, the Egyptology, just like the research, the researchers in Egypt. And this is, this is, first of all, I, this is a woman from a white woman from England. And at the time she was the first, she was the first woman to ever be hired. And when you work for, when you work for Egypt and as a researcher, archeologist, you have to retire at a certain age. She reached the age and they let her keep going. You know, so the only person to ever have, have that happen. So, but this is all reincarnation, which, you know, I can understand people being skeptical about it, but, but her story is very, very compelling. But thanks, Robert. I'm glad that Liam likes Hecklefish and say hi to Yanni for me. There's Joe Childress. Uh, thank you. Thank Keep up the great work. I appreciate it. Thanks for the support, guys. I really appreciate it. Duck Steady. Duck Steady. Oh, here we go. Jonathan, never made it to a live before, but you made it tonight. And I appreciate all the support in the uh, in the live premiere I saw you in there. I don't know what this avatar is. Let me see what's going on. What's going on his avatar? Is that... Um, it Some looks like of, a watch. The watch in a case. A watch in a case, and it looks like maybe somebody on a cycle. Maybe he has makes cycling watches or sells cycling watches or something. What 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 do these th what do these icons mean with some with some of these? What do you think that well, means? Well, because you have to have a YouTube channel to comment, right? You have to create your own YouTube channel. So a lot of people, when they create their channel, they put stuff that they they do for a living or that they're interested in or whatever. So you think he's interested in watches and motorcycles or something? Um I think it's a bicycle because it looks like there's a Tour de France jersey. He's bisexual. Yellow. How do you get that from there? Tour de France jersey. Oh, bicycle. It's I a you said bicycle. bicycle. There's Mike Willis. Um, I'm thinking the Hecklefish plushies are going to sell out fast. Any chance of us black belts getting an early crack at those? I also bought uh, bought a diamond beer stein that helps my chances. Wow. Uh, I, I don't know what the diamond beer steins cost. I think they're $1,000. What? $1,000? Diamond is $250. $250. All right. Um, Gold is 100 Drink where... And look, if you're new to the stream or the show, they're they're 250 just because people wanted a way to support the channel. Um, that where YouTube doesn't take most of the money. Uh, we don't really think mugs are worth that. Mugs, you know, no. mugs should be 15, 16 bucks. So he bought a diamond one. Whoa! Woo. And um, and super chat and black belt. If you're new to the show, patrons have levels and. Great way to support the channels for Patreon. It's as little as three dollars a month. Um, we get to keep most of the dough, which is helpful because YouTube keeps most of this. So Patreon's a great way to support the show. And black belts are that's the highest level. So they get all kinds of goodies. Like tomorrow morning, we do a special Discord live stream for just the higher ranks in Patreon. And there'll be probably be 15 of us in there. It's a lot of fun. And everybody gets a chance to have fun and talk. But Mike uh, has a good point. He may we, we may have to do some some early releases for the for our big supporters. Yeah, our VIPs. Agreed. Agree. Agree. Mm -hmm. right. 
everybody's very agreeable tonight. You got it, Mike. There's Jeff. Do priests have a lot of unused exorcism equipment in their garages? <laughs> Nicely done. You know, it's you 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 bought this crucifix. You said you were going to use it, and all it does is lean up against the wall, and now you hang plants on it. I told you not to get the crucifix. It just sits there doing nothing. Then you finally throw it out, and then she wants to get the crucifix again. You didn't use it the last time. This time I'm going to use it. So much holy water wasted. Matthew Bola, doomed to the crab cat. Support Agent Hecklevis. Yeah, that's the only thing you got to support. You got to crab. You got to fear the crab. Fear the fear the crab cat. That those are for sale on, uh, on the store as well. All right, I'm not, I, I wasn't going to plug so hard. It just it just it, you know Mike was asking about the plushies. There's Joe P. Creepy stuff. Uh, loved a great episode. How do you keep demons away? Exercise regularly. <laughs> I like a bad joke, and I love his beard. You love a pun, don't you? I do. I love a pun. That is correct. And I caught your thinly veiled snide comments about stuff that keeps being bought and then clothes get put on it and then you sell it and then you buy it again. I know what you were saying. What was I saying? Well, you, op you <laughs> open the door and now people are like, what the hell is she talking about? So now, now you have to tell it. Go ahead. I bought a treadmill and he said I shouldn't because I'll never use it. And then we got rid of it. And then I well, got another you, one later. We, we <laughs> bought it and you never used it. Well, yeah. Right. Yeah. That one time. And then, so we got rid of it and uh -huh. then uh, you wanted a new one. I did. That, that you hardly ever use. But I do use it, don't I? I use yes. it. She's, <laughs> she's, a very, she's a very dedicated athlete. Uh, TV man's daughter. What do the hand symbols at the end of the videos mean? That's the Shaolin Kempo salute. Martial arts, a big part of my life. So that, that's what that is. And, um, you know, now doing the show for, for a couple of years, if I could go back, I wouldn't do it because of all the symbolism that I've discovered in researching the shows. Like, you know, this is, you see this with the, with the Masons and all, the, all that stuff. I would, I would have stayed away from it, but you know, it's here now. And anytime I take something that I repeat out, people get upset. You know, I stopped doing the chair. People didn't like that. I stopped doing the dance. They didn't like that. Vegas Nomics. Great episode. You guys are awesome. Uh, welcome to welcome to join this good Catholic boy for mass at St. Joseph's on Sahara anytime. Oh, and hey, Victoria, how are you doing? Oh, well, hello. Okay, good. <laughs> Go. Hey, Jay. <laughs> You know when you do that, he's just going to keep you on longer and longer. Just start talking, and then oh, he'll right. keep you off the screen. Yes, I'll try that trick next time. Right, because 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 <laughs> it doesn't work on Gino because he'll just he'll just say cool and, and he he'll just, just play there. poker. He'll just yeah. sit there. Yeah. You know, Victoria is fun because she doesn't want it. Right. And the more you don't want it, the more you must have it. Exactly. That's what she said. Hey, thanks for the invite, Vegas Nomics. I, I don't like to go to mass. Uh, nothing against the religion or the priest or anything. It's just boring. Um, but I do stop in a Catholic church from time to time if I'm feeling feeling blue or I just need some peace and quiet. But I like to go there and it's pretty empty. Uh, Ray Lewis, just love the show so much. The line about the vodka made me smile. You're a man after my own heart, or a woman, or whatever. I don't know what Ray what Ray is. These days, you could be whatever you want. Quantum Sledgehammer, 559. My wife loves the ghost hunter shows, especially Zach. I'm a skeptic of the supernatural, mostly because the idea that it's real is terrifying. And that's that's kind of fair, right? It's easier to not believe in ghosts, because if ghosts are real, that's very scary. So I understand that. Um, yeah, you know... I, a year ago, I would have had more comments about the ghost hunting shows, specifically Zach's. But now that people watch this channel, I, 
I'm hesitant to, I don't want, I don't want to hurt, insult anyone or hurt anyone's feelings, especially if they're a creator. I guess, I guess he is a creator. I guess those go to Hunter shows. You believe those, right? I, I don't say that I believe them, but I don't say that I don't believe them. Like if we're all energy, right? Um, oh, here she goes. When here she goes. Everyone settling. Go. Every, everyone. Some, grab a cocktail. Here she goes. Then what happens? Like, you know, with the exorcism stuff, like a lot of it you can attribute to mental illness. But can you attribute becoming super, super strong or suddenly speaking languages that you don't know? You can contribute those to mental illness. How? Well, the super strength comes from adrenaline, which makes you stronger. But no one's ever had super strength. That's just part of the story. And, the, and it's called xenoglossy, when you can speak a language that you haven't learned. That's, that's also hasn't been documented or proven. It's only been a, something that people say. Like, the, like, like Ronald Hunkler was speaking Latin and Aramaic, right, in the books. And, in the, and I think, it, did Linda Blair maybe speak some languages? I think she did. Yeah. But in the books, he spoke Latin and Aramaic. But he didn't do any of that. He made all of that up. You know, he said it was, he was a bad boy. He was an, annoyed at his mom, who was very religious, and he was acting out. And that's why he never wanted sure. to talk about it ever again. Yeah, I just, you know, oh, yeah. like so I said, I So that's how I explain that. Go ahead. I, I don't, like, I, I wouldn't say, oh, I totally believe in all that stuff, but I wouldn't play with a Ouija board, and I wouldn't go spend the night in a haunted house, like... I just don't want to get. You wouldn't play with a Ouija board. You never did that as a little no. one. Play with a Ouija board. No. Huh. Well, that's that's how some people get possessed is playing with the Ouija board. Brought to you by Parker well, Brothers. That's the... <laughs> well, that's Isn't the it? that's the thing, right? Like if you if you if you mess with it, then you open yourself up to whatever these dark entities are. Now, ghosts, though, though that's different than demons. So, so ghosts, ghosts are different than demons. Yes. Okay. So are ghosts, ghosts are different real? than demons. Ghosts, the ghost hunters? are souls of people that are he were here that aren't here anymore, and for some reason their soul is still tied to this earthly plane. And demons, you believe that? if you believe. The literature were never people. They don't have souls. They are they are evil entities from hell or wherever you believe, you know, evil spirits come from. But they weren't people. Canada. They weren't humans. So. So you believe in ghosts? The ghosts are real. Uh, I I don't believe they aren't real. That's remember the best thing to do is just hop right on that fence and just survey survey everyone else's firm opinion. Just stay on that fence. That's safe to be up there. Demonic hordes. I know what he's going to ask about. Saw your short on the Black Eyed Kids. I won't be mad if you give a shout out in the end of the video. Do it. I I did sixty seconds on the Black Eyed Kids. It wasn't that wasn't enough? Did I thought I covered everything in it? Maybe we'll, we'll do we'll do more. We'll do more on it. I promise. Tiftastic's here. Very reliable. She's very reliable. Thanks um, to me and the family. Lo sending my love and support. I appreciate that support. Couldn't do this without you guys. Omnipresence. What's your history on Long Island? We're sitting in Center Reach wondering. Hey, shout out Center Reach. Strong Island. Uh, my I don't have a very exciting history. Omnipresence. Born in the Bronx. Lived on Long Island for a lot of my life. And I've lived in... All five boroughs in both counties on the island. But uh, I like Center Reach. Parts of it. You know what I'm talking about. Parts of Center Reach are nice. You know, you know what I'm talking about. DS, the RN, very supportive tonight. DS, the RN, I appreciate it. Could we get a window cling? I'd like to show my support on my car. Congrats on 21K. Thanks to all who showed up for the premiere. You're very positive, and I'm glad you're here. Um, you need to go into the Discord and introduce yourself. 
you're not already there, because I get I get a vibe from you, DSDR, and I get an energy from you. I think you'd be part of our family. Thomas Caldwell, 74, no risk, no reward. I agree 100%. Is, now I, I'm wondering, this. he's got a Guy Fieri vibe going, doesn't he? He he does, yes. He's making me hungry. He's got he some just needs the shirt with flames on it. Yeah. I'm sorry, I can't hear you because we we're over talking. I didn't hear what you said. Well, we'll catch up later. Ed Keegren, 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 love the opening. What, Night Court? The, the, Night Court, that one's fun. Do, do. I'm just kidding. I won't make you sit through the whole thing, but yeah, I thought it was fun. And a little hecklefish acapella singing in night court. Mr. Peckerwood need a finger like an evil mug. Money for the guppy mama fun. That's pretty funny. Finger like an evil. Now that, that bit made me laugh. Not all the bits do. But that one made me laugh, and, and Annalise made me, made me laugh also. And I, and I, I really debated putting it in, as it's pretty pretty tacky, but funny, but funny. Um, Edward Bacock, <laughs> Bacock, Bacock. <laughs> oh, Gino, you're ruining it. <laughs> Uno, dos, tres, cuatro. Human. I want you to know I said human. Thank you for all the dough tipping. As I'm sure you will find, always is a good time. Ooh, 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 it's fun to tip the F-I-S-H. It's fun to tip the F-I-S-H. <laughs> Ladies really really contorting themselves to, to, to spell the spell that out. Um, need help on Medium, the site, for my new dystopian future book, American Calamity. Um AJ and Kidden, when he says it's hard to get attention, post-apocalyptic fiction readers will enjoy it on the plush of all the suggestions. Um, I don't know how to... Uh, do we just search for that, Edward? I mean, I like... I like the, sto the, story, the story idea. Where is the... Go to Medium and uh, Eric and Calamity. Calamity. T. I don't know how to found it, man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I can't find it, Edward Peacock. But um, throw a link in the chat or something, and uh, and I'll pull it up on the screen. Uh, Bradley Benz, possession is nine tenths of the law. <laughs> Nicely done. That that is true. <laughs> um, and you know there are people watching who are very religious and believe strongly in possession and don't find any of these puns funny at all. I think they're pretty good. Quantum sledgehammer's back. I was at the lake recently and thought I saw a demon. False alarm. Just turned out to be Hecklefish's second wife. Oof. Oof. Yikes. Yikes. Yikes indeed. Uh, Tim Peterson, produce the plush. That's coming. Would the ball is moving down the field? It's slow. It's slowly moving, but but it's moving. Sterling the Archer. Ha 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 ha. This video is graphic, but no one believes it. So you didn't get demonetized. See what he did there? Every time I type demonetized out, my my eyes and brain read demon first like it, it reads demon and then it ties stunned she's she's stunned stunned in silence um i mark that on your calendars that that's very rare sid's vlog uh can you make a story about alex collier and the andromeda connection collier 
Art Bell did one show with him in 1997. Thank you for hard work. Um, send that in the tips line, Sid's vlog. If Art did it, I, I want to I wanna look into it. I mean, if Art did it, I probably know the story. Andromeda Connection. I, it rings a bell. But send that in the tips line. I'll definitely do it. I mean, Art Bell stories do good on the channel. And some people hate that. You know, um, I get a lot of hate in the comments from Mel's Hole. And some of them that I'm ripping off Art Bell. I, someone, someone was saying it like in the in the premiere chat today. If if you follow this channel, you know that I don't rip off Art Bell. That that he's he's idolized here. There's pictures of him on the wall. Plus, he gets credit every time he comes up with any story. So no, I I take exception to that. But Art's story for you know the 99 percent of us, Art's stories do really well. I mean, Mel's hole was was back up there at the top of the charts this week. People just want to know what's going on inside Mel's hole. Paratrooper 108, was that raw audio in the filmed exorcisms? That's a good question. That came up a little bit in the premiere. So if you're talking about the Father Amort exorcism, I believe it's, I mean, since since I think that she's, I, I don't know what's going on with that woman. Because um, if you watch that documentary, when they're just talking to her, she seems pretty normal. Like she's clearly, she's clearly a little odd, but she doesn't seem, she doesn't seem crazy. She just, she seems a little odd and quiet. Um, but then goes bananas. But that, that audio coming out of her mouth, that's a, that's an effect that he put in. I didn't put that in there. That would have uh, that would have felt really dishonest for me to do that. Free can put that in the documentary, and there are parts if you watch the whole thing where you can hear that effect bleed over into other people's voices, and sometimes you can hear the effect drop out a little too soon, so you just hear her screaming. But the first time we, Jen and I watched that, not, uh, preparing for the episode, and we're just watching, and it's fine. And then she comes on and screams that voice, and we were both like, "Whoa!" Like it was it was impactful, so I had to use it. But uh, no, that was, hang on, hang on. There she is. There she is. People are asking the name of the documentary. It's called The Devil and Father Amorth. And it's, the I think, on Amazon Father Prime. Amorth. Yeah. So I want to fix your framing. I want to come you to come down a little bit and maybe a little closer. Because it looks like you're way down there. Well, actually, if you tilt it down, then everyone's going to see the those those big milk machines. And then that's then they're going to have comments. What? In the world, talent guy, what cases did you find that the subject were reported to be speaking in reverse and or Aramaic? I had read that there were cases recorded of this. Any truth? I didn't find any talent guy. And um, in the episode about reverse speech, I maybe I, you know, I, I certainly gave the balanced approach to that to the theory of reverse speech, and I find it very interesting. But I feel like I maybe should have went harder on the debunking side. I don't know why I didn't. Um, but still, I still said that it's probably most likely just aud auditory pareidolia, right? You're just hearing random sounds and your brain hates that. So it tries to find words. I mean, that's that's how I think we can explain most EVP, right? It's just It just sounds, but our brain thinks it's saying, you know, my wife did it or whatever. It says on the, the EVP. Um, so I've never heard any of those. I've heard those stories, Talon Guy, about speaking reverse in ancient languages. And it makes for a very fun blog article to read. You know, he it, he was just speaking and then played it back. And he was speaking a language that has been dead for a thousand years. I mean, it's very dramatic. But um, but no audio of it. Just, just a blog article um, that I can only read on the Wayback Machine. So it's not good enough. So no, I didn't find any of that. Um, but I put lots of links in that episode to places where you can listen to, you could spend hours, days just listening to reverse speech and people's interpretations, which are, I don't buy it. Uh, there's Jay, uh, love the new, uh, after files intro, learn some new stuff. I'm glad Jay, that's, that's hang on. Is it, is he wearing a camp Greenfoot shirt in that avatar? He is wearing a camp Greenfoot shirt. Look at that. That's awesome. Well, 
I mean, do something nice. Sing him a song. Do something nice for him. You sing him a song. You, you say at least say his name. So you thank you, Jay, for for buying a Camp Greenfoot shirt. And I like the beard. Who, who, who designed those? I did. And you were like, "It's a cool shirt, but I don't get it." Well, because it didn't so, make any sense. But we. Well, of but course did, it did. What did we do? You put it in the episode. And well, you we made... learned that we learned that Hecklefish used to be a camp counselor there in the eighties. Well, yes, because I actually and talked he... to him. Right, and when the kids sitting around the campfire, Hecklefish would read from the Necronomicon from Lovecraft, which. And I asked him, I said, it, it's a little intense for kids, isn't it? And Hecklefish said, you know, at the time I didn't think so, but a lot of those kids grew up kind of weird. They did. They grew up. They did. She confirms. Uh, Puke Skylark. Excited to have a Mel's Hole and Lizard People shirts coming. What do you think it would take to exercise D.C.? Who's D.C.? Washington. I mean, that's what I was thinking he meant. If he means, I mean, how do we exercise Washington, D.C.? I mean, small yield nuke. <laughs> Stop, it. It. Stop it. I'm not saying it. we should do that. And I don't endorse it. I'm, I, I, I'm being hyperbolic to illustrate that most of the people in that town are awful. Is that fair to say? Yes, that's fair to say. You're welcome, Jay. Jay just said, love the shirt. Thanks, Jen. Well, you and Jake, and you can talk privately through the chat. I've got to, I've got to move on. There she goes. Question the answers. Hey, check out my story on ancient buried megalithic rock wall near me. It's incredible. It's called Rock Wall Buried in Plain Sight. Yeah, but how do I find that? How do I find that question the answers? I mean, is that your channel? I'm, you know, I'm not allowed to, I'm not allowed to look up YouTube channels on the live stream anymore. You know, according to my executive producer. But I can't find you, brother. But judging by your hair and beard, I think it's probably gonna be very good content. And I would I would definitely check it out. But if if you have a link, uh drop that in the chat. There's Feta. Like the episode, was the audio of the possessed lady screaming altered? Was that original audio? Um, so yeah, you you listened to that. So that that was that was uh, altered, dramatized. Also, how do you explain Latoya's kid walking backwards up the wall to the ceiling? Um, in a few ways, one is remember everyone involved in that story was uh, hardcore believers in stuff and seeking money. So. Everything they say has to be taken with a grain of salt. Now, what makes it compelling is all this stuff is written in the police report and in the DCS report, but written by people who believe in supernatural stuff. I mean, the, the, the police chief, Austin, this guy believes all kinds of stuff. He doesn't believe in dental, dental hygiene. That's clear from the video, but he believes in supernatural. Um, so someone tried to show or debunk how the the child could go up the wall like if, if the grandmother's holding him they did it they, they they had like a physics formulas about how it could be done um but from what i understand from what i read is that he kind of ran up there fast and sort of flopped over his grandmother's head the story is told that he kind of levitated up there and walked across the ceiling but that's even Latoya didn't say, said that's not what happened. He just kind of ran up the wall and then flipped over. And look, I don't believe her and I don't believe her kids. I don't believe any of that story, but that's just, that's just my, I, that's just me. Lots of people believe that one. That was a, that was a big, big story when it came out. I mean, it was for a long time. And if you look up possession, her story is going to be one of the top ones that comes up. So maybe there's something to it. I, you know, I, I wasn't, I didn't find it compelling because I didn't find her believable. Where some, some other people talking about their possession, they, they seem very believable to me. And you know, Latoya was into she burned sage and psychics and clairvoyance and stuff. So 
if if something like that happened to her, she, we're we're already off on the wrong foot because I know she believes everything. But who can say? Stickle brick. Uh, likes the channel. Second place goes to the Oddest J. Has a tiny channel similar. He could use your help. Love you guys. Well, uh, there's the help. Oddest J. Everyone go check out Oddest J. Nancy J. Very interesting show. Does this one rate up there with the episode on Hollow Moon? Uh, no, Nancy, that it doesn't. Hollow Moon was, was like a 180 for me. I went into that story thinking the moon, the story is the, the moon is a hollow spaceship and I thought it was the dumbest shit I ever heard. And then three quarters of the way through the research, I was coming around like, eh, there's some compelling points. And then by the end, I was like, clearly the moon is hollow. It's the only thing that makes scientific sense. So I came all the way around. It, I, it, uh, on Twitter, they call it getting moon-pilled. So I was totally moon-pilled. Um, as far as exorcism of possession, I went into the story as a 90% skeptic, and I came out as a 90% skeptic. Same, same. But what about, do you believe? I mean, I saw a couple of people in the chat. Do we have some possession believers in the chat? We do, but let's do a giveaway. Oh. Oh. We do a first giveaway. Read, first read Scott F's comment, though. The power of cash compels you. The power of cash compels you. <laughs> oh, that's the good stuff. All right. So hang on, let me let me see if I can get figure this out. No, that's and if this is your first time here in the live stream, this is how it is. This is what we it's very it's not professionally done. <laughs> um, I'm not sure why anyone watches it, but I'm glad you do. I'm glad you're here. I hope you're having fun. But if you're learning how to do a live stream, then you know not, don't watch this one. Now what now what do we want to say? That someone wanted Annalise to be. I think you can't do that because <clears throat> it it'll it'll get mad at you. Okay, well we got to what what do you want to do? Possessed? Possession? Possession. I mean, that's, that's bo boring, but I guess we can do that. Ugh. Demonic demonic possession. Oh, that's so much to write. <laughs> well, that's finger. the point. Licking no, guys, good. we're not How doing milk machines. No. Stop it. Stop. Do you think we can get away with finger licking good? <laughs> yeah. Let's try it. Because you might got to call back to the episode, right? So here's how it works. Um, let's see if I can make that make it so you can see it. You type the word into the chat, just how it's spelled. This is finger licking good with just one jig. It's licking. It's not licking. It's licking. Finger licking good. You type that in the chat. And then randomly, someone will be picked, and they'll win a $50 gift card to the Wi Fi store and a personal phone call from Victoria, who you, you could, you can use, you have 60 minutes with her. You can, as therapy, she will tell no. you jokes. No. But, so you just make sure, and you'll get her personal number. Is that right, Victoria? No. Actually, they can come to Discord and put a ticket in, and I will chat with them briefly. <laughs> On the phone. Somebody said, somebody said demonic knobnard. <laughs> demonic <laughs> knobnard. That, that's a long time viewer. Finger looking good. Let's see all oh, the typos. Oh, are you guys, you got, so sugar wire. That's not going to work. It can't be any spaces or punctuation. It's got to be just like you see it on the screen. Um, something sensory finger ligging good. That's not going to work, but that's very funny. Uh, Leandro spaces. That's not going to work. Angel star finger lick. Uh, that was Gino's nickname in high school. Uh, ta fail was spaces. That's not going to work. Finger licking God is not going to work. Finger freaking good. Funny. Um, is that the language of butt stuff? All right. That, I, are you guys looking pretty good. They're doing a good job. So, Gino, ghost, yes or no? What is this? Why, Files, We Died in 2012 is your other channel? We Died in 2012 is your other channel? Your SMQ AI channel? 
They've been putting that over and over and over and over again in the chat. The same person? Yes. Maybe maybe Blue Ridge Blue Ridge wants to just ch 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 chill with that comment because it's on the screen. We read it. Thousands of us saw it. <laughs> it's, it's weird. Um, but if that's an actual question, uh, no. I. The other <laughs> channel is the Wi Fi's backstage. Pecklefish has a channel. If you want to check out, but we died in 2012 is not uh, that. That's not ours. No. Uh, are we ready to draw? We got 500 people in there. Let's do it. All right. There's uh, Vanessa, Spencer, Dustin, George, Jeff, Austin, Reagan, Christoph, Cherry, Arch, Element, Happy Hills. Programmer X is here. Melting Man. Winner is Yay! JL. Two letters. Woo! Avatar, just a J. This is a mysterious JL. So, JL, hop on, hop on Discord, and uh, Victoria will give you a call. And, uh, <laughs> whatever you want to talk about. It's your, sure. it's your hour to spend. <laughs> All right. Nope. Did we do it? <laughs> we did it. Yay. All right. We did it. Um, we're worried. The power of cash compels you is very funny. It might be the joke of the night. We'll see. Lois, uh, Lois Green is here. My first after files. Welcome to the madhouse. This is it. This is all we do, Lois. It's not, uh, it's not a professional thing. Uh, I'm a night shift nurse. And I'm usually working. So glad to be here. Recently received my merch and love it. Thank you so much for supporting. And a night shift nurse, thank you for being a much better person than I am. We need people, more people like you out there. I'm glad you're out there. Robert Prey, their longtime supporter of the channel. Great video. And exorcism is a tough call. No real way to prove it. Great for discussion either way. No real way to prove it. Jonathan Doric, very supportive tonight. I'm a fish, I'm a lover, I'm a freak in the covers. I'm a swimmer, I'm a saint. I do not feel ashamed. Hey, Mr. Heckel Hecklefish, buy some gray goose for your bowel. Uh, he likes some um, Belvedere in his bowels, Jonathan, but I appreciate that. There's Bally Red Wine Terry. I don't think I believe in demons, as it's told in Christianity. I've seen patients with true mental health diagnosis uh, that manifest as demonic when they grew up with very religious family. I'm an ICU RN, and I do believe in spirits. Well, that's interesting. ICU RN would, is cl very close to spirits, I would guess. So that's interesting that you believe that, especially being a woman of science. Um, but but I agree that the possessions are happening with mostly with people who grew up in very religious house, households or are acting out against it. Brian Milnar um, is a few vowels short. I'm with you, 90% sure this isn't real, but the other 10%, it's tough. Uh, you remember what his avatar is called? No, it's some... She doesn't remember. B Herb 76. I laugh more than anything else when I watch The Exorcist. A little girl, girl cursing is always hilarious. Also, being an atheist probably helped. Um, you know, and we laugh about it now. So, uh, B Herb 76, I'm assuming that's your year of birth, what makes you in your late 40s. So, Gen X, uh, horror, we, we grew up on horror. We grew up with Freddy Krueger and, and, Friday the 13th, like really gory, scary stuff. But that's the 80s. Exorcist came out in 1973. No one had ever seen anything like that before. And now we watch it and it's, I think it's still think it's scary, no doubt. But like with the vomit, the vomit now is, it's almost funny because it's so over the top. But when that came out in the theaters, people were actually vomiting in the theaters. Um, people were passing out in the theaters. People were having panic attacks. The Exorcist was so crazy when it came out that ambulances were waiting outside the theaters because people were getting sick. People were, I mean, people were fainting and like hitting their heads and ambulances were lined up. Police were sometimes there because the lines were so long and crazy. Um, so it was a phenomenon because no one had ever seen anything like it. But, you know, we've become so desensitized to it. Like on the on the Patreon chat just before the episode tonight. By the way, Patreon's a great way to support uh, 
the channel for as little as $3 a month. And on Patreon, we do the Friday mornings is like private chat for the, for like the, the higher levels. And there's only a few of us in there. And then, um, for before the episode on Thursdays, like just this afternoon, uh, we, we have a chat for even more Patreon members. So it's a lot of fun and it's, it's one of the perks. So check it out. Um, but what we were talking about in that chat was human centipede. Which you won't watch, Look, right? No, I, and I love horror films, but I don't, I don't dig the, that torture porn kind of stuff, especially now, have you seen, like that one. Have you seen The Exorcist? Oh, yes. Still oh, scary, yes. right? Still scary. But I was raised, you know, I was raised in a Catholic household. So that movie was terrifying. But my mom, but, you know, she thought <laughs> if it was on TV, then it was okay for us to watch. So I remember watching the nope. censored versions of like Halloween when I was six. Big mistake. So we were talking about Human Centipede, which... Mm -hmm. Just a, just give the two sentence log line of what human centipede is about. A guy wants to make his own human centipede, so he kidnaps four people and attaches them mouth to anus. Uh, basically, that's the story. So the first person is the head of the centipede, and the last person is the end of the centipede so and then it's disgusting and then the human centipede 2 is about this super oh, gross guy when they, eat, when they eat food it all gets passed down through that one sandwich. <laughs> yes. yes and then on the second the second one is a gross guy that loves the movie and so he decides to create his own and so he kidnaps the girl that was the actress in the first movie and she's oh, stuck you, in the gonna... chain again are you going to synopsize the whole trilogy? Yeah, and then the third one is a prison with a crazy warden that does it with all the prisoners. <laughs> that's Human Centipede. So that's what we have. The Exorcist is child's play. But um, because we just keep getting more desensitized to it. But the Human Centipede, I only saw the first one and not... I didn't, it wasn't a movie that I sat there and it was a movie that was like, oh, it was hard to get through. So what I did to help me get through it is just realize how over the top and crazy it is and just try to laugh at it. You know, like when you say a, a little girl cursing is always hilarious. That's, that's how I tried to just accept that movie because it's so disgusting. So I just had to keep telling myself, this is crazy. It's so crazy. It can't be a, a thing. Um, but that's, I mean, that's where we, where, do, where do horrors go from there? But, um, I mean, you couldn't even do, you, you couldn't do Human Centipede in the 70s. You couldn't really do uh, Friday the 13th. You couldn't, you really couldn't do that in 73. I forget when the first one was. 1980, 81. We'll have to look that up. Friday the 13th. No, it's Google wants to show me Friday Night Lights, which I think is, is scary for different reasons. I mean, they were doing some, I can't remember what year the first Texas Chainsaw Massacre came out. But like 78 was when Wes Craven started doing uh is it Wes Craven? No, the other guy. Uh well Texas Chainsaw and, came out in 74. Yeah, and then like I spit on your grave and a couple of those other like super, super, super intense horror films came out then, but those were really sort of like I mean, those weren't films that had main mass appeal. I think The Exorcist was like won a couple of Oscars. Like it was a mainstream movie. Yeah, I mean, John Adjusted Parker, for Inflation yeah. is still one of the highest grossing movies of all time. Uh, let's see what. Is Gino signaling? 
You're missing out on the most important uh, possession movie, uh, uh, which is Evil Dead. Oh, it's so good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so Evil Dead's good. A great, that's a great one. That's influential. That's a good one. I'm just looking for the awards and the, the wiki pages. It's a million miles long. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten Academy Award nominations. Three wins, best screenplay, best sound, um, best screenplay, best sound. Yeah, I mean, that was that was a big, big deal. And then, well, the Entity was a great possession movie, too. But that's a rough one with Barbara Hershey. That's a rough that's one. A good that's, one. Not, that's not for the kiddies. And the, um, no. the Exorcist, Exorcist recut, is that's good, too, because that's, that's even scarier because they added a couple of little – I mean, I guess it's not spoilers, right? The movie is 50 years old. <laughs> but um, like scary faces in the window and they really made the crab walk crazy. So, um, so, I mean, it still holds up as a, as a, as a pretty scary movie. Poltergeist. That was, that was scary in its day. That, that was scary as well. But on the exorcist, the, um, the, the filming of it was also full of horrors. Like there was, um, there's one scene where the mother gets thrown against the wall, and she wasn't given. Like William Friedkin was was famous for being just aw awful to work for, and just uh, uh, super obsessed, and you know, crazy, and um, you know, which is tough because you know you hate working for a director like that who's so abusive. And then the movie comes out, and it's a phenomenon. So then he's like, "Well, yeah, this is the way it's done." You gotta, you gotta, you gotta get on him. So yeah, the, the mother's thrown against the wall. She's not really given the right reaction. So he just throws her against the wall. She cracks her head. She screams in pain. And that's the take that they use. Uh, if you remember that one scene where Linda Blair, where she's like just going up and down in the bed over and over, she was in a harness to just yank her around. It's, you know, this 11, 12 year old girl, the harness broke and she wound up getting really, really hurt from that. And she couldn't, get anyone to tell she was yelling you know she yelling for them to stop but she, she couldn't really articulate it because she's just being thrown around and she got really really hurt from that so yeah there's um there's a pretty good documentary on youtube on it that may be um probably easy to find about the making of the exorcist it was really really crazy there's jt out of all the stories you've investigated which one do you think it has the strongest chance of being real that's hard to say, JT. The, I mean, the, the hollow moon is, is one that turned me around. So, you know, when asking questions about the episodes, I kind of, I kind of need to have them have the list of them so I can just quickly scan through. Cause it's like, a, what do we got? 120, 130 of them up there. So, um, well, I mean, let 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 let's let's see the. Now I go into most of the stories, assuming they're not true, but still enjoying the stories. But assuming they're not true, um, yeah, none of these, uh, Adam and Eve, none of these, no UFO story, ancient Egyptians in the Grand Canyon. That's a fun story. So this one, I has think has a strong chance of being real is is the military built, reproducing alien vehicles, reverse engineering alien technology to create their own ARVs. I think that has a good chance of being real. Um, I don't I don't talk about it too much because the algorithm doesn't like it. And I also don't want to invite anything anything dangerous. But from time to time I will mention I will mention people who are killed under mysterious circumstances who are investigating certain things or whistleblowers. I think a lot of those are real. I think a lot of those are, are government murders. Uh, Valiant Thor, we debunked. So there's the hollow moon. I mean, that, that, that's the one that jumps out at me. Oh, now we're going way back to the groove yard now with those. 
Thanks for support, JT. Appreciate that. There's Brand Hello from Yellowknife. Love the show. Another classic. Hey, JT, have you ever check out Art Bell's interviews with Dr. Malachi Martin? I, I haven't checked those out, Bren, or at least I don't remember them. I'm sure I've heard them if they were at our show, but I don't remember those. But I'd like to know who that is. Jim Martin. Oh, Irish American priest. Who is an exorcist? So he was on our bell. That's interesting. I wish I knew that, you know, a week ago. Oh, yeah, there he goes. A real life exorcist. There's the oddest Jay behind every good man. There are better women pulling the strings. We love you, Jen, says Johnny. <laughs> Thank you, Otis J. I love you guys too. This is a different setup you you've got you here. Like it. No, it's fine. You don't like it? No, it's fine. You're used to that one. Yes. Camera one. Camera two. Camera two. Camera one. Camera one. Camera two. Camera two. <laughs> what, what's that? So I married an axe murderer? Uh... No, that one was from Wayne's World. Same actor, different movie. Wayne's World, same actor, different movie. So in Patreon, uh, by the way, Patreon, great way to support the channel. And videos go up early there, early access. Um, there was a comment thread that got started talk, you know, talking about the KFC being addicting. And one person said, um, what, his wee beady eyes? And then someone replied, that smug look in his face. <laughs> I replied, Pentaveret. Do you, right. Do you remember who's in the Pentaveret? Uh, the Vatican, the Gettys, the Rothschilds, the Queen, the Queen, and, and the Colonel, Colonel Sanders before he went tets up. Before he went tets up. Yes. Yes. Before he went tets up. That's what he says. That's what with his says. wee beady eyes. You didn't read. You didn't read his his comment. Well, go ahead and read it. Great show, AJ. Oh, I was also a priest decades ago, and one of my priest's friends said exorcisms are very real, and he said he sat in on one. Whoa. Yeah, it's intense. Yeah. You know, when we were watching the documentary, what we had noticed is when they were doing the exorcism of the one, Christina, or whatever her name was, um, there were probably, what, 20, 25 people in the room and the thing is, is that everybody in the room, they all believed it. Like there was nobody in there. <laughs> so AJ said, if I was sitting in there, I would kind of be like, hmm, I don't know. But everybody that was there believed it. They, they were all praying. And I know that a lot of people will say, well, you know, if you're religious, then of course you're going to believe it, right? But it still seems very... Like, it's one thing to be religious, and then it's something else to be, like, all in on full-on exorcisms, I think. And everybody that was there just told... They, they were all in. And so... I, I don't know. I mean, what is... What is real? There's obviously something wrong with this woman. Something, you know, she obviously has some type of disorder. So she was very mild mannered. Otherwise, yes, she was. But it. Took, she didn't seem they, crazy. They had four people holding her down. Yeah, the the one guy there in the uh, that's holding her down now. I think that's him. You see him later. There's just sweat dripping. Oh, this 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 guy. No, this guy right up here. Yeah, in the blue. That yes, that you guy. Really, but it, you can't really see in this picture. But there's just sweat dripping off his nose down onto this woman. He's just drenched because she's just thrashing so hard. Mm hmm. So I don't know. I mean. Oh, hey, here we go. <laughs> no, it's just, you know, I hit the wrong button because, you know, this is not a professional thing. That's all right. All right. She says it's okay. That's interesting, Mike. I wish I I wish I could have talked to you a week ago as well. 
but um but there are lots of lots of exorcists in the church now where there really wasn't that many before and i don't remember how many there are in the country i thought i i thought i read something like 80 but mike would know but i thought it was something like 80 and the official exorcists the ones that you know are part of the church they go to Ro rome and they do like a whole i guess they do like a seminar like a week long seminar how to pull the demons out um, and I don't mean to make light of it because I kind of, even though I'm skeptical on it, uh, the biggest part of me just was really wants it not to be real. I really, it really would be, it, it really would be bad if, if these people really have demons and the devil in them, that's, we don't want that to be real. There's yellow umbrella homebrew. Great episode. I always found the dark side of the world to be very interesting. Me too. Me too. There's Melissa. She can't wait to buy a hecklefish plushie. It's we're moving it down the field. Slow, slowly. But uh, we're gonna get those for you. There's Ron Klotzer. Great show. I had a witch staying for me with staying with me for a bit. Said my house needed to be cleansed because my house was full of upside down cross sigils. Wow. Why have a why 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 even let a witch stay with you? Even not believing in witchcraft, which I don't. If, if if someone's gonna come stay at my house and it's like, oh, by the way, I'm a witch, be like, nah, hotel. Hey, can my cousins come stay with you? She's a Wiccan. Nah. Motel six. Rob Ashley, there are standards. They have to be medically and psychologically cleared before a person is even considered to be potentially possessed. Then if doctors can't figure it out, then they go forward. That's true. That's true. Less than one percent of the people who think they're possessed you know according to father mort less than one percent of them actually are and then and and he always requires them to to see a doctor and a psychiatrist a psychologist and only then do they move forward down the process and then he has them their eyes covered and he and he brings a crucifix towards them and sees how they react and if they react unable to see the crucifix he knows he's got a live one Beat E3. Haven't watched yet because it's the middle of my workday, Oz. Ah, Oz, but I will. Cool. Well, thanks for hanging out on the live stream. This is this is this is it. This is all it is. Patrick Turnus. I've seen some actual evil in my day. I'm on the believer side. Also love them daredevil glasses. The show, the fish, and the crew. Well, thanks, Patrick. I'm, and look, I, if you're on the believer side, I, I I get it. It's one of those things that where I get it. You know, I don't. I don't condescend to believers on this channel. You know that. But this is one where it's like, I believe in demons. I can see that. There's Bill. Hello. AJ and and Victoria. Hi. No, please don't do that. Where's the puppy? The puppy is right here sitting, sleeping nicely on the couch, not thrown. Good. I was going to say, somebody said not to throw the dog. What are you doing? Uh, I thought I was, I thought I was pointing to you. you oh, are. yes, you are. Pointing to Victoria and then pointing to you. It's hard to do, isn't it? It's like the Brady Bunch. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I back at you, Bill. Sunny A, if scary voices, self-harm, and crazy strength is the worst a demon can do, I'm not that impressed. Beer can do the same. Very nice. <coughs> very funny. And very true. Carolyn Smith, Carolyn's Food Forest and Homestead. Please make the plushie appropriate for children. Have it include the saying, thank you, human. Well, that's nice. Appropriate for children. Are there, are there phrases that we'd have to that he's famous for that can't go in there. I guess analese would not work for Carolyn. Right. Lizard I people. Mean phrase, I mean, you know, the, the phrase wouldn't the actual no. ungulate would work on anybody. I would think. No. Stop. Okay. Um, you know, he says, thank you, human. He says, uh, lizard people, aliens. Yahtzee. Um, Yahtzee. Yahtzee. What I say. What I say. What Crab I say. cat. 
So, you know, I mean, there's lots of things. I just, should. I just arrived at the number ten. I don't know how many we can use. Maybe you should check uh, with them. I think she said Maybe. ten or twelve. I, I'll have to I'm the one who brought up ten. But if the chips can do twenty or thirty or a hundred, yeah, I don't know. But Carolyn, maybe we do the Hecklefish plushie, but then we've got the second plushie that comes like in a black box. That's like the adult <laughs> Hecklefish plushie. Like when you squeeze him, he goes, "Ooh, oh!" You know, he's like he likes it. That's probably the Mister Naughty plushie. Oh, oh yes, Mister Naughty plush. That's right. Yes. Um, <laughs> hi, Mr. Naughty. Hi, Mr. Naughty. I don't know. We'll have to see what what they say as far as how much those chips will hold. We're gonna see, Carolyn. But uh, promise we'll we'll keep it kid friendly. Rebecca Mindeman, Mindeman, Mindeman. I'm in the industry and like this. I'm all for healthy skepticism. What is she in the demon? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. And, <laughs> did, you, did you get it? I did. What I did. Do you think she's in the demon industry or? Um, I, I don't know. I mean, when you talk about maybe, she, yeah, maybe she works for a church. I don't know. And they call it the industry. Well, I, no, normally the industry is like entertainment or, but I don't know. What's that in her avatar? A plush? I don't know what that is. It looks like a otter. Is it, I, but it looks like an otter with its fur peeled off. You know, well, like no, a, it, like, it's like a plushie. It's like a stuffed animal. Oh, and then it I looks thought it was like, like otter, there's like credits or something. Yeah, I don't, know. I don't know. She doesn't know. Mike D, as Ronald Hunkler lay dying, there was a knock at the door. According to his girlfriend, there was a priest to deliver his last rites. She had no idea how he knew. That's and that's that's true. And I thought about adding that into the into the story, but <coughs> I wanted to stick with believe, don't believe. Um, but that's true. Uh, according to the story, and remember. Ronald Hunkler saying he made it up. We don't have that from his words. We have it from her, from the the girlfriend or from friends. We have it secondhand, uh, but it, but I believe it. Um, but yeah, according to her, that uh, he was in the hospital. He was dying, and a priest showed up for last rites. No one called him. No one. No one should have known he was there. I mean, he was 84, 85 years old. So that's weird. Kevin says, some people mention that dogs and other animals avoid haunted demonic places. I can understand kids trolling their religious parents, but I can't see animals faking. What are your thoughts about that? Um, I just, I, I, I need to see what you mean, Kevin. You know, evidence of that, of, of an animal being afraid of something haunted or demonic. Now, it's, a, it's definitely freaky when, like, the, when the two cats will just both be staring at the wall. Just like up against the wall, staring at it intensely, and there's nothing. There's no bug. There's nothing there. It, it's sometimes it's so unsettling that we'll 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 snap them out of it. We're like, oh, oh, oh because it's, it starts to get creepy. Like, what do they see? Because right, that's that's the story, right? Is animals have the sense to see stuff that we can't. But um, but as far as I know, my pets have never seen a ghost. But if that happens, take video of that. I'd like to see that. Bernard, she has Bernard, 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 Bernard C. Great episode. Love seeing the T-shirt in the mirror in one of the cutaways. Resist. You've got a good eye, Bernard. Dennis Riz, need an episode on what the Vatican is hiding in the basement. Also, Hagglefish Plushie needs a tinfoil hat. It will. Um, we're going to have, if we can get it to work, the tinfoil hat be removable by Velcro and then be able to add... You know, other, other hecklefish hats. Um, uh, what epi uh, episode of what the Vatican is hiding in the, in the basement? That's the, um, the secret apostolic archives is what Dennis is talking about. And, and it's very, I think the last I read, the waiting list to get down there, and you can only get down there if you have a reason to be. 
you know, academic or something like that. The waiting list was something like 20 years or 15 years, something like that. And you get, you go down there with an escort for a very limited amount of time and uh, you can't record anything. You just, you gotta just show up and just use your brains, use your eyes and your memory. And then that's it. And, and obviously they're not going to give you access to the stuff that you want to see, right? The archives are huge. You know, they're, they're huge. Um, <clears throat> There's an episode on the channel about uh, about the Chronovisor, where we go into some of the stuff that's down there. And the Chronovisor, if you're if you're not aware, is a device that's allegedly in the Vatican that was invented by um, I think it was Father Pellegrino Ernetti, who had a background in physics, and he got some help from I think it was uh, Enrico Fermi helped him out. I think. Von Braun may have helped him out because it was about that time, like 50s, 60s, invented a device that could let you see through time. So not travel through time, but you can program the device to see anything. So what happened was Father Arnetti and um, another priest, Father Brune, just by chance ended up on the same boat in Venice. And it was a long trip. And, you know, there's a bunch of people there it's like a ferry or something. It's a long trip. It's hours or whatever it is. And there's the two priests on there. So of course they're like, Hey, hey you got that. I got that. And then they hang out and then they just started talking. And father Brun has said, you know, uh, he, 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 he believes about, um, you know, the, like the crucifixion. He's like, I believe that really happened. I don't think it's allegory. I think that really happened exactly the way the Bible says. And Father Renetti says, I know it happened. And Father Bruin's like, what do you mean you know it happened? No one knows. And he's like, no, 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 I know because I've seen it. And um, and then goes on to tell Father Bruin the story about the chronovisor and how you can program it to see anything um, in the past and the future. And what became fun is for there are photos circulating about like a, a photographs of what he saw. A couple of them are pretty good. I don't want to spoil the episode, but um, but it's a fun episode. And Father Brune, even on his deathbed, believed every word of that story. He says he knows it's true. He's seen it himself, and um, he said it's, he said it's true. And 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 those are the stories that drive me nuts because <clears throat> the whole story of the Chronovisor sounds wacky to me. Like you read that you read about it, and like clearly this is not true at all. But Father Brune is very believable, and Father Arnetti, these are these weren't just like pre, you know, the neighborhood priest, you know that that maybe you went to high school with, and he went to seminary. These were guy. These both these guys are very senior in the church. They they wrote they wrote books. They had books written about them. I think Father one of one of the two, Father Brun and Father Ronetti, would had like a master's in music. Um, one of them had had training in in physics. Like these were these were brilliant men. So why would they lie? I don't, you know, why would Father Brun lie with a reputation like that? Because after a while, that's all anyone wanted to talk talk about. It's chronovisor. And he said, Yeah, totally real. So yeah, Dennis, that's what's down there. Uh, Fu Man, I'm not your, hang on a second, hang on a second. What's, is he wearing a Magic Seal fetus shirt? He is, he's wearing a Mel's Hole t-shirt. Look at that. I love that. Did you ever, have you ever seen that episode? I have seen that episode. I have that shirt. <clears throat> I asked if you watched it because you don't watch you don't watch the show. People people think you watch it, but you don't watch the show. I well, watch the show but, every Thursday. You don't because and I you're keep in the track. Chat. Although I keep you track weren't, in the, of the, you weren't in the premiere very much tonight. It's because I keep track of the number of viewers. What in the live in the in the premiere? Mm -hmm. And I, I keep track of. Me. I keep track of like timestamps. So we can tell week over week how viewership is depending on the part of the video. Oh, that's interesting. Analytics. It what, is. what kind of word is analytics? What I say. There she goes. 
I'm not your normal plushy consumer, but now Hecklefish is a talking plushy. Well played, sir. I'm in. Fool man, I thought, I assume that it would just be like grown men like us with the plushy. That's because that's everyone who asked for it. So it's it. We're making it for you. And look, if you're wearing a Mel's whole T-shirt, you're gonna have to have the plushy. That's a given, you know. And and look, there's got to be a whole. There's got to be a crab cat plushy. There's, I mean, a magic seal fetus plushy would be fun. Yes, it would and, be fun. Uh, I think we also need a cartoon version of AJ plushy. Nope. We don't need my <laughs> face on anything. That that is just a cartoon of you that says some of your phrases. I don't have say, any be phrases. Safe, be safe, be kind, and know that you're appreciated. Um Right. There's that one. Trey says, I love you, I You gotta work in the AM. Shout out to Agent Hecklefish. The power of Hecklefish of Heckle compels you. You saw him say that at the end, right, Trey? I mean, there's he got he got worked up. There's Leland's. Thank you for supporting the channel, Leland. Great video. Getting close to 2 million subscribers. Can we get hint at an upcoming video? And will Hecklefish ever get a bigger tank? Um, he'll never get a bigger tank because then he'll swim all over the place. I need him on his mark for when we're shooting. You know, he's got to hit that mark. Uh, upcoming video, Mothman's coming up. If if you're into cryptids, you know I'm a huge fan of cryptids. Tim Peterson, 2222 Hecklefish sticker shirt and mug arrived. And the mug wasn't broken, huh? That's great news. Good stuff. Thanks, Wife House team. Glad to be part of the family. Keep at it. Hang loose. Glad you're with us, Tim. I hope you're on Discord. Let me put that in the chat. I mean, if you're hanging out on the live stream, you should you should, you should have the live stream on and then have Discord on at the same time. And Discord will be much more entertaining. I can, I can guarantee you that. Behind the wheel, please keep making videos. I'm trying. Thanks to your support, we can keep going. Um, how do, how do I say her name? <sighs> Clitoria Caesar. Is that how you say it? That's how I say it. Because <laughs> I'm trying to keep this after files monetized. That's why. You're trying to keep it monetized? Yes. These don't make any money after after it's over. Yeah, well. Yeah, well. It's 4.39 a.m. here in Greece. You destroy my sleep schedule. Sorry about that, Clitorius Caesar. Thank God I'm on an afternoon shift at work tomorrow slash today. Have fun at work. And thank you for that username that made me laugh. Happy Buttons Creative. Hey, yeah, it's Fizzgig. Love the video as always. <laughs> That's Fizzgig from, from the Discord? Yes. We love Fizzgig. And, and Fizzgig makes buttons, happy buttons, creates them? I'm guessing. That's the name. Thanks, happy buttons, Fizzgig. There's Thomas Codwell's back. People in church get possessed, but also people in those dojos where they learn the four strike. A mob turning violent is possession. I'd say hypnosis can be possession. The why is what is at? I don't know what the last part means. Um, I think he's saying dojos that aren't real dojos that like the Karate Kid dojo that the the bad kids, Johnny and those kids took oh. from. All right. There's Galia, a longtime supporter of the channel, dropping some pesos in the uh, in the till. Thank you for that, Galia. Hi, interesting app. I think is all in our minds, Unicorn. I think you're right. Although unicorns, I think, are probably real. I hope they are because they're awesome. S.J. Whitney, uh, if anyone wanted proof that demons exist today, just look at all of our world leaders right now. Uh, well said. Amen. Uh, the, and the problem with that is who would ever want to be in charge of so much stuff? Uh, it, it attracts a certain personality. Megalomaniac, narcissist. Um, 
What chef? Uh, thanks for all your hard work. My favorite YouTube series, Hecklefish is the best. I'm dedicating a recipe to Hecklefish for my new cooking series. Stay tuned again. Thanks for all your work. All right. We'll keep an eye out for that. What chef? Biggity bingo human. Uh, Lee Miller is Roanoke and the hopper. Come on, please. I, I've, I've avoided doing that one because it's an old story and I don't know what I could bring to it. That would be interesting. As an old story, and it's debunked. But folks do ask for that, Lee. So, so maybe we'll look at that. Uh oh, the banner's up. You put the banner up. So, so that 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 means um, that's bones is our is our last one. So, so last call is up. So I I. Because look, I can't, I can't, I normally stay in the studio on Thursday. I'm just going to tell, I'm just going to tell just how tell usually, I usually stay in this, stay in the studio. Um, so let the, let the streams go as long as you guys want them to go. And then I just crash here. There's a bedroom upstairs. It's, you know, it's not, a, not the rich Carlton, but it's fine. Uh, and then I can get up and jump right on the Patreon live stream in the morning. Patreon, by the way, it's a great way to support the channel. It's only $3 a month. Um, but we have no air conditioning in the studio. So right now, downstairs, it's the thermostats, it says it's 82. And the, and the sweat is dripping down my back. Because uh, I can't. I have fans on, but I can't have it on during the live stream because I can't hear you. So 82 or so down here. And upstairs is probably four or five degrees warmer. So it's pushing 90 up there. Is that... I'm in North Vegas in an aluminum building. <laughs> so when I got, come in in the afternoon, I opened the door this afternoon and went, oh, oh, it was just hit me right in the face. So I can't, I can't stay, I, I can't stay and sleep, just sleep sweat. No, that's okay. Right? No, I would prefer you come back home. Right. So, so we're ended a little bit early. I, I still have 149 super chats to get through um but producers please don't star anymore we won't so so last call means i can't i can't read anyone who super chats after this if you still want to support the channel financially please do i appreciate that um but i got i'm gonna get out of here a little early tonight if that's all right with with jennifer yes that's fine you should send me your your grubhub order before you leave and i'll make sure it's here when you get here grub up order no i i can't i can't, I can't have it because I, applebee's was just making me too fat so well, i had an atkins gonna, bar for dinner i'm gonna order some grubhub what are you so, ordering from grubhub what 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 I are you know, getting something so, something paleo what are you what are you All getting right. what are you doing well you get you get me something too you know what I like. Uh, Wayne Perry, love the show and how you and how you come with the Carfax. I always trust the Carfax. There's Lisa Ledes Ledesma. Lisa Le Hecklefish Plushie. It's aliens. No sheeple allowed. Lizard peeps. Fear the crab fish. A small heckle joke. Files. Actual mystery or disproven facts. You have some good ones in there, Lisa. No sheeple. I forgot about that one. That's a good one. There's Noah C. No, no C. She, uh, I don't believe in ghosts or aliens, but I think there's something unexplainable out there. Probably lizard people. It drives me nuts that lizard people come up so often in these stories. I maybe I, I, he thinks they're real. Maybe they're real. They come up all the time. Let's see which what, what you looking at. The Oddest Jay's back. Is it weird that I think the simulation theory is actually the most statistically probable reality? I'm okay with that. It's not weird. I mean, some of the top physicists in the world agree with you, so I think you're fine. That's the Nick's, Nick Bostrom trilemma, right? And I, I don't remember what it was. The Nick Bostrom trilemma says one of the three things has to be true. One is we are... Unable to create a simulation. Two is we're we're able to create a simulation or we don't. 
or three is we're living in a simulation. I think that's the trilemma where one of those has to be true. Ostrom trilemma. Let me show what I'm looking at. Yeah, I'm in the, the wiki page, right? Yeah, I can't find precisely what it was, but I think I think I was pretty close. And the way he lays it out is one of those three things has to be true. And um and the only one that really makes sense is is simulation theory. Because if we're able to create a simulation and don't, that doesn't make any sense. And that's one that's one of the, the pieces of the trilemma that we're able to create a simulation of everything, but we don't. We would, of course, that that's that's the wrong one. And the other one uh, that's that we're unable to create a simulation. So it's really got to be one of those, right? We're unable to, or this is a simulation. But if we're unable to now, that doesn't mean that we'll always be unable to. So that trilemma becomes a weird dilemma where we're where either it's true that it's a simulation or eventually it will be true. And then then we're at 100% simulation. <sighs> Mr. Peckerwood is back. I see Rune, Rune Lady's spooky eyes and raise her one special person face. <laughs> the avatar pick. More money for Guppy Mama fun. What is that? <laughs> that is, what is he done man. there? Funny face. <laughs> I mean... It, that's not a part of his his body, is it? That he's put a face on. Uh like an adult part. No, he just he pushed his neck back and made a face. Oh. You just got a five hundred dollar super chat, by the way, with no oh, comment. Say- just the just the chat. Just just he just threw it in there. Joshua Ross okay. just. Josh Ross, amazing. There they go. And thank you for the support. It really, really does help. It helps so much. Ron Klotzer, I was welcoming my one-and-a-half-year-old son, son down hall. Turned around and father and grandfather were there smiling. Both had already passed. Wow. That's crazy. See, I don't know if I would be frightened by that experience or like a, if I could turn around and and my dad would be there. That would be, I would think that'd be pretty cool. I, depending on the situation, I, I guess. But uh, I wouldn't mind seeing my pop one more time. Steely, $10. As Catholics, my wife and I appreciate your efforts to be respectful of faith. Have you seen Jimmy Aiken's Mysterious World on YouTube? They examine paranormal subjects with both faith and reason. Um, I'm a big fan of Jimmy's channel, actually. So if you don't know Jimmy Aiken, and a lot of people don't, it's not a huge channel. But I think I think he's more on the podcast side is where his biggest audience is. So they talk about uh, all the weird stories, but how at the end of the Y files, I try to bring in science and logic and all of that if I can. All the stories on Jimmy's channel, it's how, what is the faith perspective of the story? You know, so if there are aliens, what are the ramifications in Christianity for that? And when I first started listening to the show, and I didn't know it was, I didn't know Jimmy was a, like a religious guy. I mean, he's, I, I, I don't know a ton about his background, but he's, he really knows his theology. So I'm assuming that he went to school for it or something, but he really knows his stuff because I've seen him debating other people, other theologians about stuff that I get, you know, I, I, I don't understand it. So when I first listened to like the first episode and they, they got to the, that point, well, well, how, what, and how does this relate to faith? I was like, oh, I don't want to, I didn't want to hear any of that. I want to hear the weird story, but Jimmy's answers are really good. And sometimes he's like, it doesn't really, you know, if aliens exist, it's, they're just God's creatures too. You know, so it's, so it's, that's what I wanted to hear. You know, if there's stuff out there, just God put stuff out there. I was like, cool. So it, it it's a show that you, you don't have to be religious to listen to. And it's really well done. So not a mean to be gushing, but Jimmy Aiken's Mysterious World. It's a great show. Jumber Black, 
Chippity doo da, chippity yay. My oh my, what a wonderful day. Plenty of money coming my way. Chippity doo da, chippity yay. Were you guys singing along? Yes. All right. The answer is yes. Help! My girlfriend gets possessed once a month for about five days. Badoom cha. Oh, that's not funny. I think it's probably funny. not for him. No, not not for him at all. <laughs> Especially if she if she's listening to that. Right. Right. Indeed. Panic Boy, what's your take on the alien capture in but and uh Bruce Cover and James Fox a moment of contact? I don't know this one. I don't think. Bar in her Brazil Alien. I was wondering if it's what I think it is. Brazil has a lot of good sightings. South America in general has a lot of good UFO stuff. Um, so I haven't seen this documentary, but I but I'm aware of this story. If this is the one that, that crashes in, in the water while the people, are, while the guys are fishing panic boy, if, is that the same one? All right. So this is one I definitely need to see because if it's not the same one, then that's just more stuff. The one I'm talking about is there's a UFO flying over water. It gets shot down and the pieces land in the water and they get some of the, the metal. And that metal has been examined by metallurgists in, in Brazil and and eventually Americans as well. And they can't explain some of the, the alloys being used. And under electron microscopes, they notice that some of the alloys have microscopic holes in them. And they're the exact right size to be waveguides for, for electromagnetic waves in the terahertz range. Which is something that would be very, very useful. For, I mean, for data, for, for everything. You know, we're in the gigahertz now. So this is terahertz waves. So if that's the same thing, Panic Boy, then I'm, I'm, all, I'm all about it. I bookmarked that to watch later. The Roswell of Brazil. So nicely done. Uh, Murph is here. Great answer. This is why I love this show. Us nerds got to stick together. Amen, brother. Austin D, longtime lurker. First time super chatter. Kudos to the best YouTube channel content, period. Everyone I introduce it to agrees. Big shout out to the awesome team. That's me. That's Jen, Victoria. There's Gino and uh, Sir Hecklefish. Whoa, this is one smart human. Are you sure you're not pot goldfish? <laughs> Cat. Cat. Yeah, you got to hold, you got to hold him up. You got to mm -hmm. see what, you know. I don't realize how big he is until, like, <laughs> when I see him on the screen, it's a lot of animal. Where yeah. are you? I'm talking to you. <laughs> I don't like when he, when I we get home, when I get home later. I'm going to beat him. I'm gonna, when you're not looking, I just I beat the cats. I. No, you don't. I discipline them. You do not. <laughs> Those cats what? are so spoiled. They are? Yes. Those cats they eat are. lobster and filet mignon? They do. Oh, that just made my stomach growl. Better get that Grubhub popping. Christina Hinks. That was my favorite name, Christina Hinks. The greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world he didn't exist. Kaiser Soze. That's true. I don't know if, Christina Hinks, if you remember... I mean, this is this is how to date yourself, right? Is do you remember Netflix when it was just DVDs in the mail? So I remember that. And um, you get the you get the DVD in the mail. I, I, I'm assuming everyone knows how Netflix worked back then. But you be a you'd be a member, and you you can have like one or two or three DVDs at a time, and you can keep them as long as you want. When you're done, they sent you a little envelope and send them back. And you pick new ones. That's how it worked. Anyway, you get when you get the movies, they would come in a sleeve. And it would be a little synopsis on the sleeve about um, 
you know, about the movie. And uh, and on the on the one for the usual suspects, it says on the synopsis that Kevin Spacey's Kaiser Jose on it. I mean, yeah, I was watching it with someone and got to the end. It was like, uh, is your mind blown that it was him? She's like, I knew it was him. What? How did you know? Because it was on the it was on the wrapper. That's that's annoying. I mean, what what else did they put on there? Empire Strikes Back, Luke fights the forces of evil, evil, BTW, Vader's Luke's father. Right. And then they say, you know, the sixth sense, Bruce Willis sixth plays sense. a dead psychiatrist that doesn't realize he's dead, <laughs> helping a young boy who sees ghosts. <laughs> Could, just say her name. Just feel how it sounds in your mouth. Christina Hinks. Doesn't it feel good in your mouth? K's are a good sound. Auditory sound. Good auditory sound? Mm hmm. Is that a redundancy or a tautology? It's a redundancy. It's well, no one does a redundancy like Jenny. Patrick Duncan, $10, another great episode. In your research for this episode, did you come across anything that couldn't be easily explained slash debunked repossession? Um, I mean, most of it can't easily be debunked or, or explained repossession because the if someone's acting possessed, how, how do you know they're not actually possessed? I can, I can be skeptical of it, but I, that doesn't mean I'm right. They could be possessed or they could be having a, a, a psychological break, you know, a psychotic break, a, a disorder, schizophrenia. I don't, I don't know because there's no way to tell. It's not like uh, you have a camera and you could put on the demon lens and see in and see who's possessing them. You, you, it's just everybody's word. But with Father Amort, Father Mort was, um, I mean, he he wrote so much. Like he was, he was he was a, a, an amazing guy who fought in the resistance in Italy against the fascists when he was, you know, a, a teenager, and um, you know, shoot to kill type of stuff. And he wants to join the church, and they say you don't have enough experience. So. You know, he goes back, he fights the resistance, still not, wins medals for valor, still not enough experience. So he goes, he leaves, all right, church, I'll go get more experience. He goes, he gets his law degree. He's like, can I get into church now? They're like, yeah, you're getting there. Um, so then he starts working like with the church as a, he produces radio shows. He produces TV shows, you know, for the church. He writes books. He, he writes hundreds of articles on all kinds of stuff. And he becomes a beloved figure in the church. You know, he was, um, I mean, he was funny. Yet I couldn't really include enough of it in the episode. You know, I have a couple of pictures of him there, like sticking his tongue out. And that would be, that would be a way he would start a lot of his exorcisms. Like you have the specific recipe you have to follow. And you'll see them reading from a card. Now, these prayers and this order and then the thing and the what. It's got to be done the specific way. But before he starts... He like sticks his tongue out. He wiggles, you know. He, he thumbs his nose at at the at the demons because he's funny and you know he wants to get a rise out of them. And people ask him, Father Mort, are you afraid? We, you you're mocking the devil. You afraid? And he said, The devil's afraid of me. I mean, that's you know he was a cool guy. So if he says it's real, I'm I'm I I don't believe he's lying, which it it's very confusing for me. Because I could, I could be skeptical of the whole thing, but then when you throw somebody very believable, very intelligent, and very kind, and very funny, and very honest, and he says it's true, then what do you, what do you do? Father of Mort's lying? I don't think so. Now I've heard some say that, according to his writings, when he says he sees what, a supernatural event, what he means is he sees it in his mind or he feels it, and that's that's fine, but. In this stuff, in his work that I read, that it's not how it reads. He's it, it reads like it's it it's it's there. So Patrick, it's I can't really debunk that stuff. Um, I could be skeptical, but I got to be fair. I can't prove it. Gar, please do a Freemasonry video. Okay, we could do that. That's highly uh, requested. Please do a giveaway. No, it's not giveaway time already. <laughs> it is giveaway time already. Okay. 
But I think everyone's getting tired. <laughs> All right. So we're talking about because this is it's a hard one to spell. That's Father Gabriel Amor. Oh, that's good. That's a good um, one. All right. So here's how it works. Um, this you type the word exactly how you see it into the chat. No spaces. I don't. I think it has to be all caps, but I'm not sure. And then um, we're going to hit click draw, and the computer will pick someone at random, and you'll win a fifty dollar gift card. And then what happens, Victoria? They when they call you, what do you say? <laughs> they come to Discord and put in a help desk ticket, and I'll get their name and email and get it to them after the live. And they get entered in a drawing to win a dinner out with you and your husband. Right. <laughs> I just want to be clear. I just want to be clear. They want a fifty dollar gift card to the Wi Fi shop. So no dinner with Victoria. No drinks. I don't no. Drink. Okay. <laughs> All right, we're at three seventy. That should that's good enough to kick it off, right? Just wait. <laughs> well, wait. Just a little. We're, we we're on a, a lag. We'll let that go for a minute. We'll, we'll do a couple of super chats. There's Richard K. Letalian. I always liked his name too because it, it looks like a little alien, doesn't it? Yes. Because I can't get Discord to work for me. Love the show and you and your team. I'm just saying the wife is hot too. She is. She is, Richard. I don't know why you can't get Discord to work. Mm. It could be finicky. It could be confusing. Can be. Daniel Bonner, Boner. Daniel Bonner, Boner. What you're taking Baggins claiming the spirits in the Ammons house damaged his eyes and now he needs glasses, maybe faking it. Um, you know, I, I don't think anything in his shows are real, like 0%. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and he ran into some trouble with his book that a lot of it was plagiarized and he got caught like just word for word from other people's work, like well-known people. So someone who does that, you know, I mean, this is a famous guy and you're going to put out a book and you're going to, plagiarize dude you gotta get caught you gotta get caught yeah you know at least run it through chat gpt and mix it up a little bit so <laughs> but anyone will, that will do that you have to question everything else right so maybe maybe 14 years of ghost hunting is true but um but no i don't believe so so it, the hammonds hammonds has damaged his eyes i you know i watched the documentary and that that didn't happen maybe i guess it happened later Victoria, you watch do you watch his shows, the ghost hunting, ghost adventures? Yeah, I used to, but he um he comes after people that say he's lying. <laughs> so well, it comes after them how? He's gonna show up with a baseball bat? I think so. <laughs> well, I'm not worried about that. Rune Lady's <laughs> here. Did you hear about the guy that had an exorcism and refused to pay? He got repossessed. <laughs> <laughs> to discord for all your bad jokes oh that's fantastic that's terrible mandalore 42 uh the power of lord hecklefish compelled us y files to add to his vodka fund thank you for that mandalore that's really helpful um if you're just popping in i don't know why you are but if you are um what you do is just type father of morth one word no space just drop that in the chat and only that word and then you'll enter to win um Dinner and drinks with Victoria. Billy Bump, <laughs> 550 Canadian, great show as usual. Love the fact that it's not totally debunked. Have you ever experienced a ghost or spirit presence? Only the shadow person, Billy Bub. Um, if you watch the shadow, the shadow people episode, I tell that story about what happened to me, which is super scary. But that that would be the only thing that I can think of. I've never seen a ghost or anything like that. But um, but maybe I need to watch Zach's show more and they'll see more ghosts, huh? <laughs> Yeah. Keith, uh, Keith I, is it Eichley? It's Eichley. I'm very excited. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. It's Eichley. Keith and Tasha Eichley here. Fantastically done episode. They just keep getting better. Hecklefish compelled us to eat chicken, though we don't like KFC. So we grab Popeyes. That's fine. That's fair. Be safe. Be kind. Yeah. I, you lost me. We don't like KFC, Keith, for a second, because that, I can't even get my brain to process not liking KFC. But Popeyes is good chicken. I might like it better. I might prefer it. Spicy? Why are you shaking your head? I think I might prefer because it. I'm not. You can you're prefer not, it. I you're not, no, you're. I prefer it. You don't get to have it. That's fine. I don't prefer it. Gucci's for six, six, seven. 
when the doctor is exercising the demons, the woman has modulated as modulated voice. Did you do this or is that already part of the video? Um, I did not do that because it would feel dishonest to do that. That was in the documentary and it was an effect. It would, she didn't really have multiple voices coming out. Sarah Jones is back. Alaskan triangle or Antarctica? Question, 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 question. Um, both of those have black pyramids. Now that you mention those. Hmm. So maybe we could do something with that, Sarah. There's Jennifer Mendez. You can, you can draw now. Well, in a moment. There's Jennifer Mendez. I just want to say <laughs> hi to Jennifer. The Zoom 87 is here. He's a big supporter of the channel. Hey, Jenny, info on that girl that was possessed and then she got better and then she disappeared. I'm sorry. I just high editable Thursdays. What is he saying? He had edibles and got high? That's what he's saying. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I was kind of dramatic with that dude that she disappeared. She didn't really disappear. Um, well, kind of. She, father, she did the exorcism and then I'll do the drawing. Let me just explain what happened to the dude, okay? Is that okay with you? Mm -hmm. So she goes through the exorcism. It doesn't work, but Father Mort dies. He had a good run. He was 91. He was 91 in that video, in that exorcism. He still was, was, was getting around. So, so he dies, but she still has the demons. So Billy Freakin and his producers set up a time to meet her, to talk to her. Um, so they, they, they're going to meet in a park, you know, a small Italian village. They go to the meeting place at the time, and she's not there. So they call her, and she answers the phone screaming. And this is a very mild-mannered woman. Like, she's very quiet. So she's screaming at them on the phone, where are you? I'm here. They said, where? She says, this is where we agreed to meet. Well, where's that? She's in a church, like, across town, which they never talked about. So like, okay, we'll go meet you at the church. So they go to the church and then they have to stop filming. They go into the church and it's freezing cold in there. And they hear like banging from some, some like far, far down the nave, like at the all far away. They hear a bunch of banging. So they go in and she's there with her boyfriend and, and they're going crazy. And he just wants to talk to her about, you know, about documentary stuff. And then they're demanding the, film or the footage demanding it and he says i am can't do that i'm doing the thing here and they say if you release this footage we will find you and your family and kill everybody and then so freaking's like he says in the documentary that that's the first time my life has ever been threatened and he felt like it was kind of it was concerning so she, they said that to him and he's like all right i'm at well, i'm done and left, and that, that's pretty much how the documentary wraps. Now, he said that he's reached out to her a couple of times, and she won't take his call or, won't, or whatever it is. I don't know if he got voicemail or whatever, but um, when I say she disappeared, I was being dramatic. I didn't mean that she vanished, but she's no one can reach her. <laughs> that's for the dude. Well, there's Sarah, there's Anonymous, there's Cooling, there's Ed, Charlie, Platypus, Kara, Advocate William, Phoenix Stone, Aaron, Turnbull, Kelly Joy, Mike J's the winner. Yay! So, Mike J, all you have to do is, what, go to Discord? Go to Discord and put in a help desk ticket. I'll get your name and email. All right. And you'll get a $50 gift certificate to the Wi-Fi shop. And you also will get Victoria's personal number and she will read you your horoscope. So, which is really nice for her to do. So congratulations on that. OBD con code, no, B, o, um, OB done, OB done code, no B. I mean, I get it. It's, 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 it's tricky one, OB done code, no B, but I, but I get it. Got your hecklefish mug today. LOL. Thank you. Thank you for supporting the channel. I'd like to know which one you got. Did you get the, don't be a sheep? My channel, thank you for the super sticker. There's Steve. He loves the channel. Um, one of his favorites just ordered his first shirts of Hecklefish. Hecklefish is his favorite. It's amazing topics on the channel. Well, I'm glad you like the topics. They come from you guys. You guys pick the topics. Jay Vandervest, just watch the episode. Good one. Left out uh, Father Malachi Martin. Yes, someone mentioned him earlier. Demons are real as are angels, source psychic powers or phenomena. Remember bits of past lives. 
so does one who is there with me. I can't, uh, I can't debunk it. Jim Eaton, if you were reincarnated, can you get your seniority from your past lives if you were working for the same organization? I don't think it works that way, Jim, but you know, I guess it depends on the HR uh, department. 37 custom toys. Any chance for a show on Coral Castle? I I know why you want that one, 37. And I I covered I covered um Edward Lee Scanlon and the Coral Castle in the acoustic, acoustic video, um, acoustic levitation. So um, I covered the Coral Castle. I also found very rare video of him building it, like his equipment with pulleys and levers and stuff. So it's not as magical as as the legend has it. I mean, it's still amazing that he built all that stuff himself. One, you know, one guy, five foot tall, 90 pounds, but it wasn't done magically. So I don't know what more I can do to the story except just make it like a history channel thing. I don't know. So I've avoided doing it because I covered it a little bit and it's, you know, it's kind of the good stuff is debunked, but a lot of people ask for it. So maybe, maybe it's something to look at. Samari, Samari, Sammy, Samari and Nessun loves, loves us. How, how do you say it? I want to say it right. Samira Nason. Samira Nason is correct. Susan Towers, forty nine ninety nine. I'm a goldfish in a steel boat. I swim. I want it. Want it. I want it. A tip. I want it. Want it. I want it. A tip. I think he did a pretty good job with that one. He doesn't he do a good, good job at all. No. Yes, he does. Well. You guys haven't heard Gino do karaoke, though. That's that's some stuff. We'll get we'll get that on the channel. We'll, 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 we can get some some Gino karaoke uh, on the live stream, right? Sure. If he's willing to do it. He'd do it. Millions of peaches. Millions of peaches. Peaches for me. That's a great one. Mark O'Neill, $20, obsessed with the Wi-Fi. Hecklefish, awesome. You and Jen remind me of how my wife and I are together. You guys are awesome. Is she irritating as well? Uh, demonic Hordes. Demonic Hordes. Change my profile. Black-eyed rune lady. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's even scarier. Oh, my God. It's got to change the icons. Funny. Uh, can I ban? Can I ban him from here? Let me see if I can ban. Stop it! I can't do it. Well, there's Black Canvas Life Wanderers. Still hoping for that certain episode. Heard they started back up. A lot of weird stuff there. Yeah, we'll do that one. Black Canvas. It's a good one. Good stuff. Amphibious one. Did you uh, did you ever research who Steve Smith is? Reference TV show American Dad. I'm just curious. Because ever since the viewer mentioned it, I can't unsee. It's actually uncanny. I love you guys. Is that uncanny, Steve Smith? Somebody mentioned it, and I remember looking the guy up. Smith. American Dad. Let's see. I mean, <laughs> the cartoon of it is funny. It. Well, I let's can see. see how some. Well, I can't. I. I can't screen share. Well, what 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 do I do? Well, do search, search Steve Smith American Dad. <laughs> and and what that is that me? They're saying that that looks like you. <laughs> All right, I, I I guess it's not. Could be worse. I mean, you don't have a butt chin but with the glasses and the hair like I see it if it didn't have the chin all right S Steve Smith and how do you say this name I can't <sighs> I believe in the simulation theory but I believe in God too why not I had some super crazy synchronicities five years ago that proved both for me but you didn't tell me what they are 
Uh, I want to do a video on synchronicities because those are those are fun. Dickerson Designs. Oh my God. Okay, so I'll take three hecklefish plushies, two tinfoil hats, and please make a hecklefish girly shirt with a V-neck, but size extra large for my boobs. I, I mean, do we, uh, have a shirt up to two X V-neck for those <laughs> um for those sweater rockets. Bazoombas? Stop. There's Casey Jones, $75. Ah. This is a long one. I'm a fish and I'm a star. So put more dough in my jar. The type of vodka that I need is Belvedere. Okay, so, um... I need to oh. buy a tinfoil hat. So please click the super chat. We all know the government is listening. KC uh, sends love. Thank you for that, KC. Thank you for the support. I hope you enjoyed that beautiful rendition. Boy, that song goes on for a minute, doesn't it? Patricia Younger Kaka. Uh, Wiccan chicken with a side of hot cross buns served by St. Bernard. Very good. Very funny. Stay sick. Stay psyched. Stay sick. Thank you for keeping us entertained with the weird. Eyes wide open. Keep them open, man. Philip Sampson. Would you ever do a video on 9-11 and theories around it? Sensitive subject, but I want to know your thoughts. No, I would never do that, Philip. Because uh, YouTube would crush the channel for that. Especially with my real thoughts about it. Zeb Francis is here. Great episode. AJ, ever consider having an opening line? What up, y'all? It's your boy, AJ, and a fish up in here, but in a wanky frat bro kind of voice. What? You didn't like the way I did it? I, I can't I can't hear you. You muted her. You muted her when we were singing Hecklefish. Well, yeah, I muted her when, when she was singing uh, Hecklefish. Am I still muted? No. And that's how so many, I mean, even still, so many YouTube channels start with that. What's up, y'all? It's your boy, AJ, and a fish up in her. <laughs> Smash that like, hit that subscribe, pound it, and then kick it. And today yeah, we're no. reviewing an iPhone. No. Yes. Right? That's, that's what it is. How do you? Yes. Let's not do that. Up in her. <laughs> no, she doesn't. Uh, sorry, Zeb. I think we're going to have to stick with just the chair goes down and get into it. Cecil Hamilton. Uh, the power of Jen compels you. <laughs> That's the story of my life, man. Oh. Uh, what? You're coughing up a demon there? Coughing yep. up a little demon? Uh, Dian Trong, Dian, I, I'm sorry, Dian. I'm doing the best I can. Loving the live videos. What's your take on Deja Vu? I've had many experiences and I believe they are from my dreams and that's why they feel so familiar thoughts. I don't know. You know, if Philip K. Dick thought that, um, Deja Vu was the simulation, new variables were being changed in the simulation. That's where the matrix got that thought from was Philip K. Dick. Um, cause he believed, he believed it was all not just simulated reality, but like a computer programmed reality with actual code. He, you know, he believed that I don't necessarily believe that, but that's what he believed. Um, I get deja vu fairly frequently, which is unusual. Um, it's normally, normally it happens to younger people. And as you get older, less frequent. And I guess it's happening less and less to me, but it still happens. And sometimes I'll have deja vu that lasts a long time to the point it goes from interesting, like, Oh, I'm having deja vu that it just lingers to, it starts to kind of make my skin crawl. Like, okay, I get, yeah, I get it. I don't really know what it is. You know, if I believe simulation theory and I, I lean toward it, then it would make sense that, um, that it's something in the program that's 
that's being re that I'm repeating that's the same thing. But there are people who believe in the many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics that that will say that deja vu is another reality bleeding into ours, like a little overlap where things got out of sync for a second and you have the deja vu because it's the other reality where you already experienced it and then whoosh, it's out. So I don't know. I don't know how else to describe it. I've never heard science explain it besides a stupid answer. Like, oh, it's, you know, it's your imagination. I, I, that's unacceptable. It's too, it's too strange. Reality quotient on dreams. How about an episode on common dreams we all have, such as dreams of flying and so forth? I'd like to do an episode on dreams. I don't know how well it would do. That's why I asked you, you know, what you'd like to see. <laughs> But we got that coming. Andre's back. Do you think aliens visit us regularly? Are they around? Do they impact our evolution till now? What about reptilians? Thank you. You're amazing. You're amazing, Andre. I lean more toward there's the UAPs come from like under the ocean than from across the galaxy because the, the space is so vast that the technology required is, is bananas. I mean, it's so vast. As a thought exercise, go on some website where it kind of lets you see the scales, just the scale of the solar system. Like, how, you know, two scale, here's where you are, and here's the, here's where Mars is, and here's how, how far Pluto is, and, and start to see the scale. And then take that scale and say, here's where Alpha Centauri is. And it becomes, the numbers get so big that the mind can't comprehend it. And I mean that literally. There are the number numbers in the human mind get so large that we literally cannot understand them. Um, if you watch Wi Files episode number one, it, the episode's on math, but there are numbers that I talk about in that episode that, if you think about them according to you know the theory, if you try to envisage envisage this number, you're you you will go insane. You're like, your, your brain will collapse on itself. However it was said. And those are real numbers that exist. So those big numbers, we'd have to cross that kind of space. It seems unlikely to me. Reptilians. I, I don't really, I don't really believe in reptilian humanoids because I, I don't see any evidence of it. You know, I'd like to see a skeleton. I, I, I believe more that about the giants than I do about the reptilians because, because the reports of giant skeletons. Ugh, awesome glasses. Thanks. Why does your crew keep dropping out like we lose this, the last seconds of what they s <laughs> <laughs> That's well, funny. I, I guess it's their connection keeps getting dropped, right, Jenny? No. Theo, $37. Thank you for that. During your research for this episode, did you find any other stories involving the church and later denied they were supernatural that caught your interest? Um, stories involved the church and later and later denied that they were supernatural. You, can you put some punctuation here? Tell me what he's asking. During your research of this episode, did you find any other stories involving the church and later the church that they later denied that they were supernatural, but they caught your interest? There's yeah, some you words just read it. in there. No, you just read it. Did you? Did you find stories with the church that the church denied that they were supernatural, but they caught your interest? Mm, no. Rune Lady's here. No, I'm just I, I'm just kidding, Theo. I, I can't think of anything off the I, I was specifically focused on the exorcism stuff. Um so and I really wasn't digging too much into into church mythology there's but we could do a whole series of episodes on on the stuff that's in the vatican and stories that the that the church has denied we can do we can we can just do a series of those but i don't know how well they'd be received oh this rune lady's back having an interview with father dan real or another exorcist or several for patreon only if you want to see that you know, i really don't interview people but if you want to see that we can maybe do that you want me to interview a priest 
We could do that on the Who files. Oh, do it on the Who files. Save it for the Who files. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. How do you say? How do you say this one? Do 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 do. Bye, Corona. My 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 my. Whoa. Uh, DMT is the only way to feel like you overdosed and died and get to experience death before you really die. That's certainly that's certainly true. That's that's the power of the of the tryptamines that that, that eliminates whatever the part of your brain is that controls your sense of ego. It suppresses that. Now, whether that's just, you know that's a mystical, you know, universal energy thing, or it's just the result of a chemical suppressing a part of your brain that controls that. It's hard to tell because they won't let us research it. Either way, Corona, that's correct. There are drugs that will even be that are more intense than that, and I'm I'm hesitant to say them on the stream. Um, but if you DM me, I'll tell you what they are. Carl Puff, for people who use the argument that God cannot be both all good and all powerful, forget He gave us free will. That's true. If you believe that, Carl, then that's 100 percent right. But there are many people who don't believe that. They believe that we're just born and we got free will and we and God has nothing to do with it. But I respect both opinions. 37 is here. My ex worked in a retirement home for priests and a father who lived there still consulted with priests who perform exorcisms regularly. He told her some spooky stories. I bet he did. I'd like to hear some of those stories. I'd like to talk to an old priest. <coughs> Saw you. So you wave. Oh, it's cloudy in there. It's cloudy. Well, I saw him doing this, and that's sometimes that's the signal from the producer's window. This is the signal. Oh, well, this is just. But the, he's that small, so I just see movement. But ah. then I pull him up, and he stops moving, and he goes, <coughs> and then I realized he wasn't signaling. He wasn't. He, was, he wasn't. It's probably. I don't know what he's doing. Maybe he's got a gas leak or something. He does. He's something. in the club and it's smoky in the club. Smoky. It's smoky in, in the club. In the club. Up in her. Up in her. <laughs> I'm going to start next week's episode with that. Let's see how it goes. No, you're not. <laughs> no, you're not. What up? It's your boy. It's your boy. <laughs> boy oh that's that uh, jenny's acting like she ordered food i did <laughs> but it's Waiting not gonna be here for another for 20 minutes food do you like food i love food shay and zarin is there do you lean more towards simulation theory or the gateway process theory where there are multiple layers on top of our reality that's what i believe you could you can have both Cheyenne, 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 Cheyenne. I think you can have both. And I'm probably in that camp, which makes me, it almost feels like fence sitting. But in my mind, I can make it all work. The, the multiple layers of reality where there are realms and dimensions that we can't perceive is what Cheyenne's talking about um, that are beyond our perception and understanding. But that could all be part of the simulation, right? That's what's crazy about simulation theories. There, it's Everything works but that could also be part of God, right? That could be the overarching thing. You've got God who creates the simulation and the simulation creates the gateways, the, uh, the infinite. You kind of need to, if you didn't watch the gateway process video, that's, that answer sounds weird. If you watch that, it makes sense. Trav Rob's there. He loves the channel. Any episodes planned on strange things in South America, Taos Cave, Brazil's Roswell events, lizard people stuff. You know, uh, it's gonna have to be uh, Brazil because I'm gonna watch that documentary tonight looks fascinating and there's just a lot of great stories there and and and, and it's hot here in the studio because we have no air so i'm squirming because i'm you know i'm it's i'm, I'm, I'm just sitting in in just swamp ass just just moisture <laughs> just Wait, but. i just need i need to you know this faux leather chair it really needs to be something <laughs> else something you know something Sorry. that can wick away the moisture you need some moisture crevasse. wicking. Yes. From <laughs> Paul's here. Didn't watch the episode family stuff, but played it on my phone for metrics. Thanks for that, Paul. Looking forward to seeing it. I hope you enjoy it. And thank you for uh, 
Thank you for getting the numbers up. Profit of end times, $10. There will always be something in the universe that we as humans are incapable of wrapping our minds around that leaves a lot of room for God. People try to fit God in a box for comfort's sake. I agree with all of that. Profit for end times. There are definitely things we can't understand, but we want to, so we just make them fit. Uh, ranch dressing is here for five dollars. Tried to off myself via huffing back in two thousand three. Don't hey, do that. Thanks for the tip. It was terrifyingly horrific. How am I allowed to still be here? I'll never know. Well, because you're supposed to be here, ranch dressing. And uh, no one should ever feel that sad. If you do, get some help. Get it right away. Egg Kegron, thank you for the twenty dollars. If you believe in simulation, then you believe in a power greater than yourself. Of course course be obnoxious not to jonathan sylvester fifty dollars whoa fish really need some money i need to buy some stuff fish really need some money youtube don't pay enough fish really need some money so click the super chat like that 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 <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> Terrible. I love it so much. I love it so Ooh much. La la. She, doesn't she say <laughs> la la in that one? She mm. does. Uh, she no, she it? says ooh la la. Yo yo. She says moo la la because she wants the moo la. She does. Because money got stolen from her. That was actually based on like a real thing. Her manager. That's, we got to cut that off real quick. To quote Bill Hicks, all matter is merely energy condensed to a slow vibration. That we're all one consciousness experiencing itself subjectively. There's no such thing as death. Life is only a dream and we are the imagination of ourselves. Bill Hicks was, he could get deep when uh, when he wanted to. But Jonathan, what you're describing is 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 the gateway process from a couple of weeks ago. I don't know if you saw that video, but uh, Bill Hicks and you just, you know, succinctly described um, the reality outlined in that episode. Nicely done. And Grifter, favorite channel, last week you said PCH didn't go to houses giving away money. They did. Link below. All right. The publisher's clearinghouse is what he's talking about, that they never gave away money because that's a Mandela effect. But, but and Grifter's saying that they did. I don't know if he's right. I can't see the link, though. Scott Canfield wants Hecklefish for president. I like it. I like it a lot. Thanks for the support, Scott. Jonathan's back. My wife gets infected by demons every month. I thought <laughs> we already had that joke. Yeah. Oldie, but a moldy. Oldie, but a moldy. Manfred Kampf, I am not brave enough to delve into this topic. Ephesians 612 is true. Well, I don't I don't know that that piece of scripture. Do you? No. Are you, you looking do? it up? No, I don't know it. Our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. I agree with that. I wish it was true, but that's not how it works, but it should. We shouldn't be fighting each other. We should just be fighting the evils. We should. We don't, do we? No. It's gamification of life. Too much tribalism. Uh, there's JJ. Good morning. Thoughts on the Mandela effect? Uh, there, I mean, if you want me to explain what I think it is, I, can, I don't want to go through all the different Mandela effects because we're going to run up against my, my heart out here in about 20 minutes. Um, but what I think the Mandela effect is, is just a group memory. Because in, the human memory is very, very unreliable. Where if you you can tell yourself a story, and if you say it, think about it, the story over and over again for long enough, your brain will create memories of that story. Um, 
which is scientifically proven. And I'm sure you remember things like from childhood, you know, we all have certain memories that stick out. We've got these big blocks of, of memories uh, of time that there's nothing, but then we've got these little sporadic memories. And that when you have those little memories that pop up, you know, since you're five, six, seven years old and you think about them for 20, 30, 40 years, every time you recall that memory, you go into the, into the files and pull it up and, and look at the memory, you change it a tiny bit. You know, maybe, maybe the, the color shirt you were wearing is different or maybe a different haircut or maybe, but it, but you change it a little bit. And every single time you remember that, that memory a thousand, two thousand, five thousand times. Next thing you know, there are new people in the memory. It's you're a different age. Um, it's just unreliable. So if if all of us start to talk about, well, Kit Kat was spelled this way, or hey, Nelson Mandela died, it just gets into this group consciousness. And every time you because we Americans don't weren't really thinking about Nelson Mandela, you know, well, uh, when he got out of prison. So it, so, hey, Nelson Mandela died. You hear that? Oh, I didn't hear that. And it just gets around. And next thing you know, you heard that when you were 11 and it, and your mind creates a memory. And I think that's what happens. But still, I can't understand why Moonraker, why she didn't have braces. I swear she had braces. Terry Ruckett's here. Thank you for your evidence-based content. You're welcome. It's quite refreshing. Will Hecklefish ever, ever get a friend? Maybe a beta or a koi? Cat? He doesn't like cats. Maybe a friend. I mean, we, we've had the occasional guest host. It hasn't hasn't worked well, but we've we've done it. J. Yi, I saw a man claim possession, then disappear from the midst of an attentive crowd. It sounds like it sounds like like the end of a Hemingway story, doesn't it? It does. In the midst of an attentive crowd, and that's it. That's it. It's just an old man in a boat. Uh, pixel death for four ninety nine. I'm behind on my exorcism payment, so I'm being repossessed. Yes, it's very funny. I actually do like those. Those are very very cute. What? Oh, death engineering for six sixty six. Thank you. Fun episode. Mark of the Have beast. Been. Mark of the beast. Although that was not true. That was like a mistranslation. It's not six six six. It was actually like. Fours or something. No, it wasn't 420, but it, it actually wasn't 666. Catholic demons are re as real as any brand. They're an archetype for mental illness. The power of thought compels you. It's interesting. I mean, if you're hearing inter voice, that's what's interesting about this in your head. Well, well, I, I was trying to, I, we were over talking because there's a delay, I guess. Well, that's what's interesting about this topic with the demons is we've had super chats that say that they're definitely real and super chats saying they're definitely not. And um, and I, I can't tell you who's right. There's Todd. Hi, everyone. Great episode as always. We look forward to Thursday nights every week. Hey, so do I. I found the future ex Mrs. Hecklefish. Check the avatar. She was released unharmed. Fear the fish. What's in there? What is that? It's a big fish that he caught. It's a, I can't. Tells he's small. It's a big fish. Well, I don't think that'll fit in his bowl, will it? No. But he doesn't mind. He doesn't mind, you know, a a larger fish. He doesn't mind that. <laughs> you know, he's a bit of a chubby chaser. The Otis Jay's Stop. back. Jen, Jen, if I sent you a Tron T-shirt, would you wear it? We all know Tron's mm -hmm. the best, right? Yep, uh, I'd no, wear she it. Would, she would not wear that. Yes, I would. They're not going to send you. They're not going to send you clothes to try on for them. <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> going to start. Hey, just let's just send. She'll model clothes for you. Send her all kinds of things. No, that wasn't. <laughs> so he's saying that. Hi, AJ and Jen. Love your show. Keep up the good work. He's he's kind of implying that this is our show. 
Well. <laughs> and not my show. It's your show, honey. Did you hear how that, that didn't she hear it? Like she just pet me. It's you do do. I'm glad you like the show. Jennifer Mendez is back. Great job. My son Liam loves the show. Hey, Liam. Shout out to Liam, who's watching now live. Liam is her. There's dust, 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 duck, duck, Stevie. Ghosts, schmos. I, 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 I get it. Keith Eichley. By the way, we're huge Trekkies here. Picard is kicking so much ass. Go watch it if you haven't seen. Be safe, be kind. Keith, I've watched every episode three times already, man. Uh, it's the first thing I do uh, when this when this thing ends on Thursday nights, whoosh, Picard comes on. Uh, JE's back. I've experienced ghosts, so I guess I believe that if you experience it, you're going to believe. I just, no chance you can have photos, huh? Space case 7717. I love your opinion on the skull experiment. I'd like to do an episode on a skull experiment is a, uh, is the near death experience, life after death experiment. I've been trying to cover that space case, but it's, it's, you know, it's just a lot of death. I'm trying to figure out a way to get through the algorithm. Like, I just want to explain to the algorithm. Look, I'm talking about a scientific study about it's mostly philosophy. It's not about dead stuff, but um, it's on the list because I'm really interested in that subject. Hell's bell is here. Love the show. Any possibility of doing a short or something on Smith and month act of 1948 and how it changed. I don't know that one. Hell's bell. And month 1948. This region popularly referred to Smith. Specify the terms with the U.S. government can it engage in public diplomacy. I'll have to read up on this, but I'm interested in this kind of stuff. Have to be assured. I can't do an episode on this. I'm no, no hell's bell. No one's gonna no one will watch that. I can't. I can't break that down on on the Y files. But uh, but I'm gonna look into that. Say the tab. Ed, Edward Charles Tron is back for ten dollars. I'd love a lizard people response team morale patch. I love that idea. Christina Hinks. Christina Hinks. Just uh, I just like the way it feels in my mouth. And uh, she seconds Peckerwood. I'm a pretty finger licking evil. I'm pretty finger licking evil. Need it on a shirt. Christina Hanks wants I, I finger licking evil. But that's I not wrote what it down already. Said. That's not what he said, but it's it is funny. It is Cat. funny. Where Cat. are you? He's ignoring. Christina Hanks. Rick H. Ten dollars. Ghosts and demons are real and different. I am part of a real paranormal investigation group. What we have experienced would change the most skeptic minds. Well, that's really interesting. You think they experienced actual real ghosts? I think that they experienced some unexplainable things. Well, that sounds good. That sounds fun to experience unexplainable things, but they think they're explainable. Well, as spirits I, that walk the earth. Look, paranormal just means outside of normal reality. So who knows? what has been experienced who knows well i've got i've got just under 12 minutes here and um i'm not going to get through these super chats so are there any that you want me to get to whoa i can't stop this feeling deep inside of me you mean you just don't realize what your tips do to me? When you tip me, uh, I can pay my bills and you make me uh, tingle in my gills. Uh, oh, your tips are amazing. And I think it's crazy. That you send cash to me. <laughs> and it's not fair to play that long one when we're up against the clock, but when you drop 500 bucks in a bucket, you got to get a hecklefish song. It's, it's only fair. 
Four by four pup love, loves the stuff. Can you look into Skinwalker Ranch or the show about the Legend Mountains that stopped abruptly a few years back? It was about the Lost Dutchman mine. That's interesting. I guess we're gonna have to do Skinwalker, huh? A lot of stuff there. A lot of stuff, worth, Skinwalker. It's it's worth covering. Um, Toxic Fart has a question for Victoria. Could you ask? how AJ times the breaks with the ads so perfectly. AJ, how do you time the breaks so perfectly for the ads? <laughs> because with YouTube, you can tell it. it you, if you're going to run an ad, this is the spot to do it. So when I upload the videos, I put in the, the time code for where the, the chapter breaks are. Is that, that fair to say? All right. Nods all around. Untapped values here. Delete if reposted. The larger consciousness system may be stress testing your level of awareness of the greater reality. You are the simulation. Google the back cover of Dave McCready's Real Alien Worlds. Have fun. I'll open a tab with that because untapped value, always good information from him. Real Alien Worlds. You guys always give me great homework. I appreciate it. Eric Bishop, $50. Ooh, I finally love hearing the phrase, just the tip. <laughs> I knew as soon as I saw the title and subject how the ending would be due to past AMAs. Still, as usual, an awesome episode, especially the background on Ronald. Awesome stuff. Thanks, Eric. I'm glad you liked it. Uh, Buckmaw, really enjoy all the quality content. Thanks. This is my number one non-sailing channel, Rockwell, Texas. Great suggestion for a show. Uh, if you're just into like one genre of channels, like sailing or fishing or camping or four by four, whatever it is, if you're one of those YouTubers that YouTube watchers that just watches one thing and you, and you add this to the mix, I know that what a big commitment that is. Edwin Ligatti, like Edwin L. Thank you for the support. Rush Rider 13 for $25. Yes, wiggle it just a little bit. I say wiggle it. Thanks for the tip, human. I used to work graveyard shift and would spend hours listening to Art Bell. AJ and team have replaced that for me. I need a long form podcast from y'all. The team does just as good of a job, if not better. Power of Hecklefish. Thanks, Rush Rider. Yeah, I used to listen to him all night myself. Um, that will be coming before the end of the year. It will be a, a long form podcast of the episode of the subjects that I cover on the channel. You know, not it won't be quite as zany, hecklefishy. Won't be as many anal jokes. It'll just basically be a 60 minute version of the story so we can get more details, more background. Is Daniel Garman's here? Have you seen any of the videos about the quantum computer, D Wave, and the Amazon Black Projects? I've seen the stories about those. They're claiming chemtrails have had nanoscale particles that attach to DNA and echo your DNA frequency into space. D Wave can see you. I've heard some of that, Daniel, but the as the technology changes, the chemtrails change. You know, so old guys like me told stories about chemtrails and saw chemtrails before Amazon was even a thing. So it was always something else. You know, it was the government, it was aliens. Now there's Amazon, it's that. Now it's quantum com computers. You know, the technology changes, so the chemtrails change. Still interesting, though. Cross down cord. I'd highly recommend the book Hostage to the Devil by Father Malachi Martin, an exorcist. He's already bookmarked for my homework, as well as a Netflix documentary of the same name. I didn't know there's a doc on him. Father Martin's guest spots on Art Bell are up on YouTube as well. Great episodes. I'm going to look into those. Balls Capone. Sweet, fancy Moses. I'm going to be in a new tax bracket over here. Taxes are theft. Taxes are theft. Never let witches stay in your house. Very dramatic people. They fight, chant, draw pentagrams on everything, and do drugs in your basement. Worst of all, they're they're usually vegan, and that's the most annoying quality about them. Epic Stranger, thank you for the ten dollars. And uh, you guys work so hard. Thank you for all the great content. Love this stuff. You're very welcome. I hope the hard work shows in the work product. Ron Remen, ten dollars. Appreciate the hard work you put into the shows. Uh, signed an old. WBAB fan. Uh, look at that. Strong Island. WBAB, you know what that is? That's uh, the home to all of your hits. 
That's Long uh, Island's home of rock and roll with 50 minutes of rock every hour. That's right. WBAB. WBAB? Let me let me hear your radio voice. No. Do a uh, do, do do the Y one hundred five uh, call. Flying high on the wings of what love at Y one hundred five. That was pretty good. Thanks. Can I hear it? Who'd you time? like to? Who would you like to send in a in a uh, what do they call it? A request request line. Who are you missing when they're on the road tonight? Right, air supply. Well, I think that's a pretty good Sally love line. Love voice. To send, Sally would love to send air supply to Nick, who's driving his truck this week, and she misses him dearly. Nick, here's "I'm All Out of Love" from Sally. And how does that song start? Victoria's singing it. Love without you. <laughs> I, I could see her doing it down there. So I'm all out of love. She loves air supply. <laughs> Loves air supply. I had air supply on one of my KTEL records. <laughs> you remember KTEL? Yes. They ah, there they go. Kenneth Smith, $20. Living in the PNW, do a real Bigfoot one. Um, oh, Pacific Northwest. Got it. How about uh, the great American hero, D.B. Cooper? Uh, D.B. Cooper's been on the list since the, like, the first day of the channel. I just don't know what new stuff to do about him. Actually, there is some new stuff. Now that you bring him back to my mind, there's some new information on D.B. Cooper. All right, so I'm going to look at that, Kenneth Smith, because I love that story. Um, it's, but it's been covered well on YouTube. So, like, let me know, did a fantastic video on it. Austin D is back, four ninety nine. Thank you, human. Maybe now we can get some indoor plumbing for this bowl. Ugh, it smells like a dumpster full of used baby diapers in here. I'm with Jen, a plushie of AJ. When you squeeze him, he says, this is not professional or the like. That'd be fun. Or, or there she goes. Thanks for the support, Austin. Eli Cash, 999. This zombie-looking picture over your left shoulder really got, got to me in this video. Never noticed it before. Now I can't unsee it. Don't like LOL. It's really scary. Close up. Eli, and thank you for the support. Semper Fi. And that's going to do it for the After Files. Thank you guys for hanging out. Sorry if we're cutting a little short tonight, but I'm not sleeping in the studio, so I I, I gotta I gotta get home. Um, but thanks to everyone who who tipped, who super chat, super sticker. You guys are amazing. You keep the channel going. Couldn't do this without you. Um, if you watch this unprofessional thing, you know it's a telethon. You know I admit that. That's why we do this is to just is just get support for the channel. Um, so I'm glad you're out there, and I'm glad you're supporting us. And um, I think we're going to see you next week with Mothman or some kind of cryptid, I think is what we're looking at. Until then, Hecklefish will see you out. I don't hear him either. Do you do you do 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 do